Please remain standing as Las Vegas Motor Speedway chaplain, Kurt Schulke, offers our invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask for your protective hand on all the drivers, their crews, and their family members, as well as the track personnel, including the emergency and safety crews. And Lord, our men and women in the military overseas and at home, put a protective hand on them, Lord, because they do keep us safe and they sacrifice for the cause of liberty. We ask this in the holy name. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem. Please welcome this century's most awarded country music group, Big Machine recording artists, Rascal Flats. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we've watched we're so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh, the Outstanding weather and terrific opening ceremonies. Six different drivers winning in the last six races here in Las Vegas. Who will it be today?
1998, NASCAR rolled the dice on the Sin City Speedway, and the bet paid off, especially for Jimmy Johnson, the king of this tri-oval. He's won here four times. Win in Las Vegas, and you're in elite company. There have only been 10 different drivers to win here. Play their cards right today, and someone new might join this group of high rollers. And Nellis Air Force Base, located behind the backstretch here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the speedway covering 1,600 miles. And what a story for Brian Vickers, less than three months removed from heart surgery. You heard him talk in the pre-race show about how his love for racing increased while he sat out just to be back in the car, an amazing accomplishment. And there is uh, Casey Kane, who, when you go back, he led two years ago the most laps here. Yeah, and he's got a really good car. Talked to Casey in the garage area this morning. Feels like the high groove will come in for his car and he looks forward to this day. He qualified third, a true pole sitter. Carl Edwards, you talked about his success here in the past, has never won this race. Kyle Busch got the pole but then had to start in the back of the pack, ended up winning back in 2009. That's what Jeff Gordon is trying to do starting 41st. Let's head back down to the track here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your grand marshals, big machine recording artists, Rascal Flats. Drivers, start your engines. Drivers are ready for one of the fastest, not only around the speedway, but fastest in time races you'll see all year. Let's bring in our own NASCAR on Fox, Rat Pack, Daryl Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. And outside, Mike, to enjoy a little sunshine before you hop in the boot. Thank you, Chris. For those of you with short attention spans, this is your race. The average running time of this 400 miler, two hours and 45 minutes. So the race is 20% shorter, Daryl. It's twice as warm as it was last week. What are the big uncertainties going into today's race? You know, the uncertainty that we all like, us in the booth and you folks at home, is the unknowns. And today there are a lot of them. This is a progressively banked track. You can run on the bottom, but I think what we're going to see with the tire combination we have here today, pretty hard right sides, pretty soft lefts, brand new combination for here, you're going to see some rim riders. You're going to see them right up next to that wall. Watch Kyle Larson. He'll have the dust flying pretty early in this race. And similar to last week, Larry, a number of big names are going to have to come from deep in the field. Yeah, Mike, I love a short race when we have drivers with fast race cars throughout the field up front. We have Daytona 500 winner Joy Logano and Kyle Larson starting right up the front with fast race cars. Mid-pack, Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Harvick is very fast. And then the other unknown, he's fast, but he has that backup car, Jeff Corden coming from the rear of the field. Love that type of scenario. Well, one thing that's certain, when we do a stand-up outside, the jet dryer comes by at that exact moment. <laughs> what? What'd you say?
ready to race in the desert. Contact all over the place. This is what keeps you on the edge of your seat. Welcome back to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The Cobalt 400 is today's NASCAR Sprint Cup race on Fox. 400 miles around a mile and a half speedway that is similar in shape but has very different characteristics to Atlanta Motor Speedway where we were last weekend. And there is Jeff Gordon rolling off, leading the field off from the pole position, but he will have to drop to the back after going to a backup car Crash damage in the last lap of yesterday's practice. Here's the Geico starting grid with Gordon winning his first ever Las Vegas pole and Joey Logano on the front row for the second week in a row. Hendrick Chevy's in row two, Casey Kane and Dale Earnhardt Jr. They have five second place finishes here between them. Kyle Larson due for a win, fastest in first practice. Matt Kenseth, three time winner here in a Toyota. Ryan Newman, top 10 in three of the last four Las Vegas races, and Martin Truex Jr. off to his best start ever. Jimmy Johnson, four-time Las Vegas winner, and Jamie McMurray with three top 10 starts here. Brad Keselowski is the defending race champion. Tony Stewart won it in 2012. David Reagan crashed late in practice. He'll go to the backup car. And Carl Edwards, two-time Las Vegas winner. Eric Almarola and Greg Biffle, best of the three Roush cars. They have seven wins here. Casey Mears, top 15 in both races this year. Kevin Harvick, top two in the last five races. Close to a record. Denny Hamlin and Clint Boyer complete the top 20. Boyer, the 2009 runner-up in Las Vegas. All right, let's talk to the man starting ninth, 06 time. Jimmy Johnson, DW here. You got us, buddy? Yeah, buddy, loud and clear. Hey, Jimmy, you know, you know what it feels like. You've done it six times before. Does this year have that championship vibe to it? Yeah, we're off to a great start. You know, there's a lot of races between now and then. We're kind of in a mode of checking boxes right now. We feel like we've checked the box to qualify for the first segment of the chase. So that's a great thing. Uh, but, you know, we've got a fast race car here today. I want to give this Cobalt car to Cobalt Big Tree Lane. They're the best sponsor in the world. Sponsor that loves NASCAR racing and all its fans. And I want to give all the fans a great show today. Buddy, we're going to ride along with you. We'll keep an eye on you. Good luck and get her done. You got it, buddy. Jimmy Johnson will start ninth. Earlier today, his crew chief, Chad Knauss, gave us his Cobalt Tools of the Race. Welcome to Las Vegas Motor Speedway and the Cobalt 400. One of the Cobalt tools for the race today is going to be pit strategy. How your driver is entering pit road and how your pit crew does once the driver gets onto pit road. That's key in maintaining that racetrack position and staying out front, if at all possible. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this beautiful weather and a great race on Fox. Thanks, Chad. For late-breaking stories, we go to our Fox NASCAR All-Star Pit Crew, beginning with Chris Neville. Well, Mike, with Jeff Gordon having to start in the back today, that just adds to the challenges of 2015. I spoke with him earlier, and he's still upbeat. He says he's a fast rate cut race car and a great pit box, but he's not going to be charging to the front like we saw Kevin Harvick in Atlanta. He said this racetrack, tire degradation just isn't that great. So what more than anything, he's got to be patient today. Matt? Chris Martin Trex Jr. is back to having fun. A career best start to the season with back-to-back -to -back top 10s. And he has fast race car yet again this week, and especially down in turns one and two, which has been the big trouble spot for the majority of the field. Now, a win today will be history-making on a number of levels. Maybe the biggest for the boys from Colorado. The last time a single car operation won on a mile and a half, 1998. Bobby Labonte at Joe Gibbs Racing. Jimmy Little? Well, after finishing 26th and worse in the first two races of the season, Kyle Larson and this 42 team are all about change. For today's race, they replaced all but two of the over-the-wall men. And his crew chief, Chris Heroy, told me he already warned his team, I am going to over-communicate today. They feel like they've missed the details in the first couple races, and that's led to many issues. So he is going to reiterate everything to his driver. And if they can do that on pit road and on the racetrack, they feel they have the speed to win. Mike? Thank you, Jamie. Getting ready to race in Las Vegas earlier. Brian Vickers back behind the wheel and his team. Pre-race pep talk. All right, guys. Uh, 
everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the support. Thank you for not giving up on me. I just can't thank you enough. It's uh, barely everyone on the crew, all my friends and family. It's been a long road back, but uh, could be more thankful and happy to be here. Amazingly, open heart surgery in December, back behind the wheel of a 200 mile per hour race car in March. Yeah, when you miss some races and you sit at home and watch these things, it makes you realize how much you want to get back in that race car and get out there and try to win a race. We have not seen a cloud all weekend here in Las Vegas. 70 degrees, full sun, feels like 80 out there. Track temp 95 and a light breeze, five miles per hour. To go 400 miles in Las Vegas, it'll take 267 laps, 45 down pit road. We've got to watch those pit road speeding penalties. You see the Sunoco fuel window there, 48 to 52 laps. We will have a caution at lap 25. David Reagan and Jeff Gordon both go to the rear after having to go to backup cars from crashes at the very end of yesterday's final practice. Wow. 24 went back there yet last week because he didn't get to qualify. He qualifies on the pole and then a back again this week. But because Jeff Gordon chose the inside and goes to the rear, moves that line up, Joy Logano in the 22 on the outside, that seemed to work pretty good yesterday in that Xfinity Series race. Funny how it goes in. Last week outside was terrible. This week it's a place to be. On Friday, Toyota and Las Vegas Motor Speedway announced a multi-year partnership. Toyota, official vehicle of the Speedway, the 2015 Camry. Paces the field for the Cobalt 400. Lights are out on the safety car and it comes to pit road. Oh yeah, baby. Nothing better than being in Las Vegas. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Three wide middle of the pack. Everybody's trying to get what they can get on the very first lap. But as last week in Atlanta, Joey Logano jumps to the front and out front. He yards Casey Kane on lap one by six car lengths. Yeah, we saw this last week with Logano. But remember, he led about the first third of the race. Didn't keep up with the track. Wonder if they learned their lesson for this week. But Darrell watching Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88 car, you talked about the different grooves. He's starting to already move up the racetrack, but now he goes to the bottom to go around his teammate, Casey Kane, in the five. Yeah, I think this early on, Larry, you can go where you want to. you got good tires on the car right now. Track's nice and fresh. But I think before the day's over with, that 88 car, he'll be up there sparking that wall. Brad Kozlowski, Carl Edwards. Kozlowski looks at that hole in the needle. It's going to close up before he gets there. And he drops in line. Behind McMurray now back to the bottom. Second place, Kane, Earnhardt keeping close tabs on one another. Kyle Larson lurking and right behind them comes that black car down on the apron. That's Martin Truex. Yeah, you know, Mike, sometimes you'll fight for that bottom so hard that you're giving up a lot of speed and somebody will go right around you on the outside because you're trying to protect that bottom. Jamie McMurray in the one was trying to be that someone looking for grip up on the top side in the early going. Started 10th, got up to 8th, now 12th. And remember, Mike, this is progressive banking. So you got a nice little groove down at the bottom. You can run the middle here and then you can go way high and run that outside. Three wide here is no problem. Eric Almirola inside McMurray, Casey Mears coming. Let me rephrase that. Three wide here should not be a problem. But you talk about Casey Mears coming in that 13 car, running inside the top 15. Little single car operation, and what a great start they've gotten off to this year, up inside the top 10 in points. I think he and uh, Amendinger and, and Truex, I think they're feeding off each other. These three single car teams that are aligned with Richard Childress Racing, I think they're really feeding off each other. Martin Truex is on a flyer. He is hugging that inside apron line and now gets to the inside of Kyle Larson. Couldn't make the pass in one and two, but he's fast. Well, you saw the interview I did with Martin uh, in the pre-race show. This guy, it's like somebody flipped a switch. Last year, gloom and doom, walking with his head down, kind of like an Eeyore. To this year, he's up on his toes. He's got step, pep in his step, smiling from ear to ear, and he's going, he's hungry. Fast car will do that for you, won't it? You got it. 
Jeff Gordon biggest mover up seven positions now moves around David Gilliland in the last lap of practice as the flags were coming out Danica Patrick had a low a slow lazy spin in turn two came down right in front of Gordon who could not avoid her Matt Yoakum. Mike, last night, Jeff Gordon and Danica Patrick texted back and forth discussing what took place on the racetrack. And simply, like you mentioned, Danica got into a slide. The car started to come around, leaving Gordon nowhere to go. Danica says all is good between the two. And she did not have to go to the rear of the field because Daniel Knost and that crew, they decided to repair her tin car. Oh, this is getting dodgy here. Gordon really trying to squeeze up to the outside. Uh, first, the 41 Regan Smith, then the number nine of Sam Hornish who gives him uh, plenty of room as we look back from Trevor Bain. I watched Gordon Mike on the start there. He just kind of held his position for a four or five laps. Mary hadn't been in this car and uh, now he's on the move. Now he's uncomfortable the car. He knows what it's going to do, what to expect. Now he's on the move. And Mike, he needs to get all he can get. We know we have that caution coming to lap 25. Strategy is going to be tough here today. I just go back to yesterday. It seemed like four fresh tires really meant a lot for these drivers. Well, I know it's not Atlanta, and I know it's different, but a similar scenario for the 24. Remember, he started back last week, and Jimmy Johnson was up to 15th when we had the 25-lap caution last week. Gordon needs to pick it up a tad, I think. Logano, the leader, 1.4 seconds ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Casey Kane. Fifteen laps complete in Las Vegas. Joey Logano's expanded his lead by three tenths of a second over Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there. Casey Kane, Kyle Larson, and fifth place side by side. Here comes Jimmy Johnson, who started seventh, up against the 78 Martin Truex, who started the race in eighth. They're battling for fifth ahead of Carl Edwards, Brad Kozlowski. Matt Kenseth and Denny Hamlin, the top 10, a little further back at 15th. Tony Stewart against Jamie McMurray. 
Now NASCAR announced in the drivers meeting that they would waive a competition caution at lap 25. Our Fox Rules analyst Andy Petrie can explain about a competition caution and the what and the why. Yeah, Mike, uh, the, the, when they say there's going to be a competition yellow, uh, this time it's going to be at lap 25, that triggers a rule that says that no one can put fuel in the car until that time. Now, if a caution does come out for another incident, cars can come down pit road, they can change tires, they can do other adjustments, but they can't put fuel in. And the biggest reason for that rule is to make sure that it's even for everybody, that the guys that maybe are at the back, maybe like Jeff Gordon, would not have an advantage of an early caution to where they could come in and put in fuel and then take advantage of something they know is coming at lap 25. Thanks, Andy. We often see a competition caution when there was inclement weather on the day before or a lack of practice. Yeah, the reason they're doing this, Mike, has nothing to do with weather. It has nothing to do with the tire combination. Th this is a new tire combination, as Daryl pointed out. But because so many things are new, they just felt like they wanted to do it here at Las Vegas. But what that's going to lead us to here in about seven laps, we're going to have a very congested pit road. We still have 42, uh, well over 35 of our drivers still on the lead lap. Everybody will be to pit road. That can get pretty congested when you get that many drivers there at one time. Larry, you think we'll see a bag of, you know, some people take two, some take rights, lefts, or you think everybody will take four? Well, I think for the most part they're going to get four, Daryl, just to play it safe, but we saw a performance gain yesterday because of that. Riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr., who is running in second place. Let's go down to Matt Yoakum for the Nationwide Dale Jr. Performance Report. Might a great shot of Dale Jr. running the bottom. He loves to run the high side here. Now, his spotter, TJ Majors, told him the one in 42 teams from Ganassi, who also like to run up top, they ventured up top, could not make any gains in the stopwatch. They told Jr., you're better at this point on the bottom. So that's where he's running, but his big complaint to his team the car needs more side bite through the first third of the corner so adjustments definitely coming on the first stop thanks Matt he is now gaining on race leader Joey Logano he's cut it two tenths of a second cut Logano's lead over the last two laps now a little side bite he could actually use that track bar adjuster and lower that track bar a skosh and make that car a little better getting in the corner which is where he seems to be having a problem Joey Logano has led every lap of this race so far and we listened in And I talked to Joey Logano on our race up show earlier this week, and he said this is a system that he and his crew chief Todd Gordon came up that he can more understand when he gives him the number system. A lot like the doctor asks you, how much does it hurt? What's the pain level? Yeah, well, the thing about it is I love the way these drivers can break down a corner and all all both ends of this track are totally different. So what you say is happening in turn one may be totally opposite of what's happening in turn three. And same thing coming off two or coming off four. So you got to break it down and be specific. In about three laps, we'll see the first caution flag of the day. Now, Logano has already put six cars one lap down. That may slightly ease the congestion on pit road, but not too much when that competition yellow waves. Now, here's Casey Mears in the 13 under fire from Matt Kenseth and Greg Biffle. Mike, Darrell, there's a lot of drivers. They're going to be welcoming this competition caution. David Reagan in that 18 car had to go to the rear of the field, a backup car like Jeff Gordon. And Joy Logano is not far behind David Reagan. Now coming off turn four, you see that red car? That is Greg Biffle. And uh, he caught the wall coming off four just a bit. Push, 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 push right into Ooh. the wall. That's a, that corner is notorious for that. That's pretty hard hit. It was. He bounced it off there. That's a lot of damage normally. So he's another See driver. the towels being waved? Those are those Jeff Gordon salute to the 24 towels. All the speed limit signs on Speedway property now say 24 miles per hour. Honoring the four-time champion, making his final Sprint Cup Series appearance in Las Vegas. And there is the competition caution as 25 laps are completed. And Jeff's almost made his way halfway up through the field. He's sitting there in 21st position now after 25 laps. Not, I don't think that's too bad. I just used Jimmy Johnson last week who won the race as a gauge, and is, he was up to 15th. Is there anybody this caution benefits more than Jeff Gordon? Uh, we uh, just talked about it. David Reagan and probably now Greg Biffle. Yes. 
Newhart. Let's find out what's going to happen on the first pit stops of the day. Chris Neville. Well, we heard Joey Logano talking about that car being a little tight early on. Well, right before that caution came out, he said the car loose getting off turn two and turn four. So that's going to be the main thing in the adjustments here. Jamie. Casey Kane started this race third, his best start all year, maintaining that position, saying the car's just a little bit tight. He has been using that onboard track bar. Matt. His teammate, Jimmy Johnson, chasing his fifth win here at Las Vegas, runs in the fifth position. The car started a little bit free on exit early in the run, but right before the competition caution, Jimmy said the car is rolling the center of the corner very well. Two Fords in the top ten, the Penske cars of Logano and Keslowski. Two Toyotas, Edward and Hamlin. Other than that, it's all Chevrolet. Earnhardt, Kane, Larson, Johnson, Truex, and Newman in tenth. Oh, Alex Bowman. Oh, wow. Is a smoker. That's coming out the, the right side, which is where the exhaust is. So that looks like this may be engine issues for, for Alex Bowman in this seven car. Tommy Baldwin racing. Yeah, he and Oh, yeah, that's internal. Kevin Bono Mannion. I, I thought they had a pretty good car for today. And uh, man, this is terminal right here. That doesn't look good. And here they come for the first stop of the day. All the lead lap cars, which would be 36 of them are almost all coming to pit road led by Joey Logano. Dale Jr. right on his bumper. You see Kyle Larson in that 42 car. Looks like they just went with two right side tires. He had that first pit box coming in. He's already out. Some drivers aren't even into their pit box yet. Johnson Hamlin. Whoa, Allgaier and Hamlin and Johnson almost all got together. Nice move by Justin Allgaier to miss them coming into his pit box. Quite a few two tire changes, Larry, right sides. Yeah, Joey Logano in the 22 car had to hesitate a little bit. I think that's why he lost a spot because as he was trying to go out, Jeff Gordon was coming into his pit box. Alex Bowman stayed on track to pick up a point for leading this race ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Cobalt, the next generation of tough tools exclusively at Lowe's. And by Sprint, bring us your Verizon or AT&T bill and we'll cut your rate plan in half. Visit Sprint.com forward slash half price. Under the first caution of the day, a competition yellow, Alex Bowman has taken his smoking 
Tommy Baldwin car to the garage area and we talked about congestion on pit road and a very close call among three cars Hamlin Johnson and the 51 of Allgaier here's Johnson leaving his pit the red car is Allgaier here comes Hamlin a little bump there actually they work together pretty good actually keep run over each other here's what Jimmy Johnson's team had to say what happened there on that drop were you just not ready no, I was waiting here to go. I thought we might be waiting on gas. I'll tell you if we have to wait on gas, otherwise you just go, Tipper. Might have been a blessing he waited. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. He like would have been, been right a, in the middle of it. It would have been a wreck. Now, there was contact between Denny Hamlin and Justin Allgaier, Matt. Mike, under that caution, Hamlin's team asked Martin Truex to pull up along the left side of the 11 car to get a good look, and you can see that cosmetic damage. Martin reported back, it's not going to create a tire rub, but there is something definitely there. Dave Rogers told uh, Denny, it's slight, no worries. Lightly and slightly. Getting ready to go back to green. We'll complete 30 laps this time by. Look at this crowd. What a crowd. Oh, they turn much. out for NASCAR in Las Vegas. Packed house. Green flag. And Joey Logano gets the jump on Dale Jr. Saw that last week. Every time on a restart, that 22 car would take off. And he's, he was able to slide right up in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 before they got to turn one. Three, four wide in turn two. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. I forgot to mention, you could do that, maybe on a restart. Hold your breath. Yeah, baby. Still sorting out from 20th on back. Looks like post-race traffic at five times the speed. Jeff Gordon right in the middle of it, three wide Ooh. back there. Ryan Blaney in that 21 car, he's caught in a trap, too. Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., second and third. Kevin Harvick around Eric Almirola. That's 12th place. Harvick, you know, didn't qualify that well, had a little bit of trouble in qualifying, but then they had a really fast car in the final practice yesterday. I thought we'd see him move up a little further than he has already. And he and Rodney Childers, they got four fresh tires on that caution. Well, that says, you know, maybe that's why he's back a little further than, uh, than he should, or thought, than I thought he would be, because he's 12th right now, where is exactly where he was when the uh, caution came out. Casey Mears nestled up against the bumper of Ryan Newman and Kevin Harvick takes advantage on the inside. Now, in theory, the, <clears throat> the 31 and the 13 would be sort of like teammates. That alliance that they have. Now, pushing his teammate right on along. Ryan Newman in the 31, also four fresh tires. We just saw Casey Mears in the 13. He only got two tires. So Harvick up to 10th. Let's have another look at that move. Well, it gets you can do that through the trial over here because you can get down on the apron. It's not out of bounds. You can go right down there and uh, you'll see guys get down there and try to make passes. And that's exactly what happened. Three wide, hold your line tight, three wide. Two wide with 31. Chris Neville. Mike, I was talking to crew chief Rodney Childers. He said he just missed it on Friday. So he got back to the hotel room Friday night, started looking at pictures of the car in practice and said, I noticed that the splitter was on the ground the entire time. Made some adjustments on Saturday, and that car came to life. And the splitter is that part right at the bottom of the front bumper, all the way against the racetrack, and evidently it was bottoming out and making the front tires light. Casey Kane takes over sixth. Yeah, that's, it's a fine line, and you know this area, between what's perfect and what's too much. Denny Hamlin looking for seventh against Kyle Larson. And I know that damage that we showed didn't look like a lot on Denny Hamlin's number 11 car, but, but Arrow is so important. That can hurt the front down force, but it doesn't seem like it's hurting him right now. Particularly in that area, Larry, around the front of those fenders, uh, the top of the headlight door right there. You cave that in, you lose a lot of down force. Thirty-six laps complete, Joey Logano. 
has led all but two. He's now four tenths ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Martin Truex, and Brad Keselowski. Forty two laps complete. Jimmy Johnson comes hunting the lead from Joey Logano. Second lap in a row. He's moved to the inside and in turn one and two and almost got the job done. This time he stays even with Logano and forges ahead in turn three. Yeah I think right there jo Joey says uh, Joey Logano in a 22 says all right you want to lead this race go ahead I'll uh, check you out here let me follow you a little bit. They were lap times were mirroring each other last time by a 30 and a 30 one. So very close lap times. And while they were going at it, company was a coming. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88 car. When I look at these top three drivers right now, they have started 2015. Earnhardt Jr., Joy Logano, Jimmy Johnson, all with top five finishes. Now, Johnson moved past uh, Earnhardt pretty quickly, and Dale explained why to his team. didn't help you out at all. No, 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 no. You're, you're good. Put down on my right rear corner like that. Just took the air off the, the car, moved a little bit, made it loose to get down in. Okay, give me a good day, sir. And that's what we saw. We saw Jimmy Johnson at 48 shoot by Dale Jr. in the 88, and we wondered what happened. He just got him loose when he got up under him like that. Moving up on hometown hero, Brendan Gaughan in the 62 is race leader. Jimmy Johnson, let's check in on pit road, beginning with Chris. Well, Jeff Gordon deep in the pack, he's saying that car a bit tight as he's trying to work his way through traffic. And that being a backup car, that car was last run at Texas when he had all of that problem with Brad Keselowski. Jamie. Tony Stewart had a good start, 12th, and I talked to his crew chief. He said, this is the most speed and comfort we've had in a car in a while. That has not been the case since the race began, saying the car is just tight to start loose on entry. So he has a handful as he's mired mid-pack. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer back in the pack as well. They rolled the dice, made wholesale changes on this car. He had no rear grip yesterday, and that roll of the dice not paying off yet, Matt. David Reagan running the 18 car once again for the injured Kyle Busch. 
Remember, they had that issue in practice where he crashed the primary car. They had to go to a backup. The first laps with this car when the green flag dropped. It was snug early in the first run, but then they made a significant Packer change in the front because the car had swung big time to the free side. Next match, second place battle, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Underneath Joey Logano. Now he's 1.8 seconds behind Jimmy Johnson, but Earnhardt moves into second. So that 18 team, uh, don't you think Adam Stevens, new crew chief of that car and that team, don't you think he's missing the guidance of the old veteran uh, Kyle, uh, Kurt, Kyle Bush driving that car? Well, he's definitely building his notebook as well, but I tell you who's building his notebook is Kevin Harvick in this four car. With those four fresh tires, he just keeps marching to the front. Now he's inside the top five as he goes by Martin Truex Jr. in that 78. Last week's race at Atlanta was a three-act play. The first act starred Joey Logano. The second act starred Kevin Harvick. Third act star Jimmy Johnson. What does Harvick have to do differently today from what he did at Atlanta? Well, I don't, this track is going to go through some changes, Mike, but I don't think the crew chiefs and the drivers are going to have to make wholesale changes if you've got a pretty good driving car. If you don't, like Jamie talked about Clint Boyer, you have to keep swinging for the fence. Good point. 50 laps complete next time by Jimmy Johnson with a two second lead. The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Budweiser still brewed the hard way. This bug's for you. 54 laps complete. Jimmy Johnson leading. Here's your Budweiser race recap at lap 55. Jimmy Johnson is your leader. He's been out in front for 13 laps. He's one of three race leaders. Four lead changes so far. 35 cars are on the lead lap, and we've had just the one caution. Uh, Jeff Gordon, biggest mover. He's up 24 spots. He won the pole, but had to start in the back because of a backup car and has gained 24 positions. The one competition caution is the only yellow flag we've seen today. Larry, did we learn anything from that pit stop? Uh, we learned it probably won't four fresh tires <laughs> next time <laughs> well, I come on I'm road. thinking. That's what I'm thinking. wonder if that's the case with Joey Logano, who has now dropped to fifth place, Chris. 
We're seeing Jeff Gordon move up. We're seeing Joey Logano move back. He said that that car was just a little bit loose off two and four prior to the pit stop. Well, right now, they only took two tires on that stop, and he's saying, this car is a handful. You guys need to find a way to help me out. Well, we got Chris, just what you need, brother. <laughs> yeah, Chris, he's going to have to wait about another 20 laps before we get into, I think, where we'll see some green flag pit stops. Now at seventh place, Brad Kozlowski and Kyle Larson. They're about eight and a half seconds off the lead. You know, this Larson car has had my attention since they've unloaded it. He was really fast on Friday, and yesterday in the final happy hour practice, he was the man that had the plan. And look at him moving through the middle of Truex and Kozlowski there. This young kid's the real deal, guys, and watch him. He'll get better and better all day long as that groove migrates up toward the high side. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Michael. You know that the high groove is not good yet because of 42 isn't up there. When it gets good, he'll be up there. You know good what, it's point. important, he has to be able to do both. If you just dedicate yourself to the high side, it gets the traffic gets up there, the track goes away. So being able to run the bottom and him running the bottom shows discipline, shows that he's trying different things to get the job done. This is gonna be a good day for him. Look at him on the bottom going after Martin Truex. This is for sixth place. How about Truex, Matt? Mike, the fun factor, not as large for Truex in that 78. They took a big swing to try to get the balance he was looking for in that 78. Haven't hit it. The car now much looser, just trying to hold station until the next stop, Jamie. Talked to Chris Heroy, the crew chief for Kyle Larson. And he said they really focused on staying down on the bottom side, staying on that white line through the bumps, and the car has been dialed. They said, we know Kyle likes to run high, and if he needs grip, he'll go up there. But we've really focused on staying low. And that, of course, is the second year for this driver, knowing what it takes to get to the front and be patient. Thanks, Jamie. Something happened to Brad Keselowski. He came off turn two without much forward momentum. Two cars have passed him. And in one lap, he's dropped from ninth to 11th. Let's listen to the engine, see if we can hear anything. Way down on speed. Remember, he's had one engine failure already this year. Darrell, it just doesn't sound like he's able to use a lot of throttle, but another driver keeps marching to the front is Denny Hamlin in that 11 car. He goes by Martin Truex Jr. Denny now up into the seventh position, even with that little bit of damage on the left front from that last pit stop. Matt? Michael picked him in the pre-race saying the 11 was a good car and it certainly is no changes on that pit stop. Denny told me driver intros the thing he liked most about his car this weekend he could run it anywhere and he didn't lose any speed the bottom or the top it was just as fast. Thanks, Matt. We checked on Brad Keselowski. Chris, does he have a problem? Well, right now he's got a problem. He can't touch the throttle. He said that car in just the last five laps has gone so loose. He's just trying all kinds of different lines through the corner. And you can see him there really working that wheel, just not able to touch the throttle midway through the corner. Yeah, loose is when you're turning to the right, and he's turned to the right a lot. But the good thing, Larry, is that's a problem they can improve on. Absolutely, but it sounds like he and his teammate Joe Logano both need trips to pit road. Jimmy Johnson, your leader, 63 laps in the books.
Jimmy Johnson still your race leader and he teamed with nearly 100 Lowe's volunteers and their longtime partner Habitat for Humanity and framed a house right here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Next week that house will be transferred to Henderson, Nevada where it'll be finished and presented to the Camarena family. Thousands of race fans watched the construction and also had the chance to sign up for a future Habitat build to help change a life in their own community. Sixty eight laps complete in Las Vegas. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right in the shadow of Jimmy Johnson. You know, Mike Darrell, we see those three Hendrick Chevrolet drivers all running inside the top four. Jeff Gordon's working to get there. Go back to last year's race, even though Brad Keselowski won the race, all four of those Chevrolet drivers from Hendrick finished in the top ten. Well, you take the top five right now, Larry, those are all Hendrick Motorsports powered Chevrolet powered cars. Huh? And a lot of those top runners took just two tires on the first pit stop. Kevin Harvick in third and closing on the leaders. Matt. This run was a good indication what Greg Ives told me this morning. The car takes a little bit of time to get going, but once they get through four or five laps, it really comes alive. The problem that Junior has now, the security in the back, the car is just way too free. They're going to make a, a wedge adjustment on the next stop to try to fix him. He can't run the top like he would like at this junction. But just remember, he had the car. He was going to win this race here last year. He came up about a half a lap short. So this is a good racetrack for Junior. He runs good here and they got the good combination for this joint. Let's explain why that happened. He ran out of gas. Since they already had the Daytona 500 win in the bank, they could afford to gamble and go for broke. And they did. They came up a little short. If, if my crew chief said we might run, we got it within a half a lap, I'd say go for it. Right. I mean, that's worth the gamble. Guys, you can see green flag pit stop have started here with Casey Mears in the 13 car. First green flag stop of the day, one of the toughest pit roads to get on, and that first segment where they clock pit road speeding, only 89 all way, feet all way, long. All way, all way, 30, 50, Kevin Harvick to the high side. On Dale Earnhardt Jr., that'll give him a good launch into the back straightaway. Yeah, he gives him a lot of straightaway speed, which uh, he seems to be closing on Jr. pretty good down the straightaway right here. Watch where he gets down the back. He's closed up tight on him. Well, he's got a mirror full of Casey Kane as well. A whole lot of racing going on around here. Denny Hamlin for fifth place takes it away from Kyle Larson. And so far, no other takers in the pit lane. Yeah, Larry, what are we, a couple laps really from uh, what I would think would be scheduled right around 75. Here comes a two car. And we knew he had handling difficulties and needed yeah. a stop. So he Brad Kozlowski's in. He wanted to get to pit road <laughs> probably sooner than this. Chris? Yeah, Mike, in just the last few laps, Brad Keselowski has slid all the way back to 12, so he was just hanging on there waiting for his chance to come to pit lane, and they can try and tighten this car up. All these stops should be four fresh tires and fill that thing up with race fuel. Four tires for Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, Jeb Burton, and Joey Logano in the pit lane. Back to Chris. Well, we heard Joey Logano just a few laps back, really begging his team to help him out, bringing him in just a couple laps early here. And they're going to try and uh, tighten that car up early in the run. He said the car was tight, but boy, 10 laps on those tires. He just says he cannot hang on to that car. Joined in the pit lane by Brian Scott and Trevor Bain. Here comes Ryan Newman and Martin Truex. As on the left of your screen, Kevin Harvick to the high side of Dale Jr. Well, that's that's four that's four tires on that four car, and that has made a huge difference. Matt, what they got? And the 31 will hit his box first. Now Newman was saying that the car was same as it was the first run. It was tight down in turns one and two, but it was hard to hang on to free down in three and four. They're going to make adjustment. Meanwhile, for Truex, big adjustments across the board. They were taking a big swing. The car just got freer and freer. Air pressure changes well. And then Dale Earnhardt Jr. He pulls into his box. Remember, you can see the tire carrier. He's got the wrench in his hand. He's going to make a chassis adjustment for the 88 to try to tighten up Junior Chevrolet. Tony Stewart, Austin Dillon, Greg Biffle, Jeff Gordon 
on pit road. Michael McDowell, Kyle Larson, Danica Patrick, and Jimmy Johnson with Kevin Harvick and Casey Kane, all the leaders in at once. Yeah, once Dale Earnhardt Jr. hit pit road, Chris, they couldn't be far behind. Well, and Kevin Harvick, you can see pulling in there. He started out 18th today, so a great run by this team, getting up to the top three here. And early in the run, he's saying that car a little bit tight, but once about midway through, once again, another driver just having a difficult time hanging on to the back end. Matt? 48 of Jimmy Johnson. His car has already been serviced now. He adjusted it behind the wheel with a new track bar adjuster inside the race car. But they also made another adjustment trying to get that race car. It's too free, especially on entry down in turns three. Jamie? Boyer just saying he's just too tight off the turns. The car hasn't been right all weekend. Still trying to adjust it, and he's adjusting it from inside the car as well. Two of the Joe Gibbs Toyotas will be the last two cars on the lead lap to pit. Carl Edwards and Matt Kenseth as David Reagan uh, gets his service. And Brendan Gaughan gets a speeding penalty too fast entering the pit lane. Edwards is in Matt Kenseth and the number 20 Toyota picks up the lead. Yeah, Matt has to come to pit road this next time. He's given up way too much time to those fresh tires. He's about the only one out there on old tires now. After last week, the strategy games they played and the way they ended up with a top five finish, I'd do whatever Matt does. They seem to have that. Uh, they're, they're willing to gamble. They are definitely gamblers. So as Kenseth comes to pit road in front of Jamie, Johnson gets the lead back. And Matt Kenseth is saying he's worse than in practice, just getting too loose in the turns as they go on. They make that chassis adjustment in the back of the car, the right side, four sticker tires. They'll fill them up with Sunoco fuel. Jason Ratcliffe was pretty happy with the piece they brought here today. So Matt Kenseth has led one lap, and he is the last driver to cycle through pit stops. How tough is it getting on pit road here? Watch the 88. Yeah, you're down on the bottom right here, and it's such an abrupt entry. Right there, you see, he was trying to get slowed down, trying to get on pit road, trying to get on pit road, and barely made it. That entrance is so late off turn four. I think it's five, four, three, two, four. There you go, buddy. 42 out of way. Brad Kozlowski reporting he may have a vibration. We'll check on that when we come back.
The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Ford. We go further so you can. By Cialis. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We're under caution for the second time today. Debris in turn number one, and both of the Penske Fords come to the pit lane, Chris. Yeah, both those cars coming to pit lane, trying to still adjust on them, trying to settle down the back end of that car. Also, Brad Keselowski was reporting a vibration in that car, so the team going to take a good look at the right rear tire that just came off the two. Jamie McMurray also among those who came in toward the back of the lead lap cars at lap 82. We're under yellow in Las Vegas. The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by KFC, the world's best chicken. How do you, KFC? 84 laps, 267 laps scheduled, a 400-mile race with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers. Time for a KFC race break. Get you caught up to date if you're just tuning in on a sunny day here in Las Vegas. And Jimmy Johnson, who won last week coming from the back of the pack, has moved to the front and is closing in on Joey Logano for the most laps led so far. And, of course, Johnson has won more races than any other driver in NASCAR history on a mile-and-a-half track. Dale Earnhardt Jr., part of Hendrick Motorsports' Chevrolet. They, they all qualified well, Mike. So we knew this was a signal that they were going to be tough to beat today. But you're not convinced that Jimmy Johnson's going to run away with this. No, I don't think he is at all. I know that Kevin Harvick has a really fast car. His lap times have been better than Jimmy Johnson's as he closes on him. And also watch Denny Hamlin. That Toyota looks really strong early in the going. He's able to run in the middle of the track and high. So Denny's got a car that you can use any groove. And I talked earlier in, before the race, this is a groovy track. You can go anywhere. And where do I KFC? right here in the Hollywood Hotel and in a NASCAR you, race. When you say groovy, we pay attention. Uh, let's head back upstairs to Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. Eric Almirola too fast entering in the pits, and Tony Stewart had a tire get away from his pit and roll out into the grass. Now, next weekend, another big NASCAR doubleheader on Fox. The Xfinity Series race from Phoenix Saturday, 3.30 p.m., and the Sprint Cup race, Fox NASCAR coverage begins Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time next weekend. That tire was as lonely as the orange cone. Nobody wanted to claim it. Nope. He just sat out there in the infield all by himself. But how about this West Coast swing? Is this not cool? Three oh, weeks out on the West Coast. I mean, this is the way it ought to be. This is fun, man. We're out here for three weeks. You saw Austin Dillon there, yesterday's winner in the Xfinity Series. Currently 12th on this restart. Johnson and Kane, Harvick and Earnhardt, Hamlin and Larson, the first three rows. As we go back to green with 86 complete. If you just looked at Atlanta and looked at this week, 
remember last week, if you were down on the, uh, if, if you were up on the outside, you couldn't go anywhere. You spin the tires every restart. Now you got to be on the inside at this racetrack. That's just one little characteristic makes this track different than Atlanta. Somebody's way up the outside of that front pack and coming. Looked like, uh, looked like Harvick. Here they come off four. And Jimmy Johnson chose the inside lane uh, for that restart. It wasn't Harvick. It was A.J. Allmendinger who went up the outside and got himself up to eighth place on the first lap of green. One thing that is the same as Atlanta, both hands and feet up on the wheel on a restart. Oh, yeah, and then certainly. Now, on the restart, things get close here. Joey Logano gets into the back of Greg Biffle. On the left corner of your yeah, screen. Right over here, you see him. I think Biffle was being held up a little bit, and Joey just bumped him a skosh. Didn't hurt anything. They opened the door for Je uh, Jeff Gordon in the 24 to go around on the outside, though, helped him. So Gordon now 14th, Logano 17th. And Biffle 15th after that little dust up. See, that 22 team, Larry, they got to be a little bit worried, uh, Joey Logano's car. Last week, they started off like a house of fire and slid back through the field, doing it again today. Now, we mentioned Tony Stewart penalized for a tire rolling out of the pit box and across pit road. Jamie? Well, and the entire pit crew actually watched the replay, and there is a NASCAR official here. They watched it, and you could clearly see that David Gilliland, the car in front of them, hit that tire. So they erupted, but there was nothing they could do at that point. Tony Stewart went to the back, restarted 35th. Now, insult to injury, Tony's car is not good, saying it feels like a late model that he raced at Denny Hamlin's charity event last year. That gives you an idea. It's <laughs> pretty bad right there. For the lead. Whoa, Kevin Harvick just owned that corner and motored around Jimmy Johnson and gone. Yeah, I think Jimmy Johnson saw that was not going to be much of a battle with Kevin Harvick in that four. Boys, I don't know about that 48 car. What about it, Matt? DW, there's a problem on the 48, a vibration right front. They are calling him back to pit road. Four, four, four. Here he comes. Hey, look, see, here we come. Now this will take Johnson off the lead lap. We'll have only 20 lead lap cars. And Larry, how would they, I mean, immediately, I mean, we're all around the two or three laps here after the green. How would they know that had a, they, they had a loose wheel? Well, I think probably what J Jimmy was telling him, he felt like he was, had a vibration. And we saw Harvick go flying by Johnson. As that became apparent, watch the pointers and the speeds relative the forward of the 48. Yeah, I mean, it was so obvious that uh, Jimmy Johnson 48 car had something seriously wrong. Yeah, Darrell, they can connect it with two things. You can, he feels the vibration and the team can go back. They have actually pressure sensors in the air hose that can tell Chad Knauss, his crew chief, if they indeed hit five lug nuts on every wheel. Here's a picture I think you're going to see all day long. Kyle Larson and Martin Truex fighting it out. One high and one low. That's right. <laughs> Upstairs, downstairs. And Carl is coming. Carl Edwards, that blue and white car, the Toyota that's entering that picture and the battle for fifth place. Yeah, oh, Carl, you know, he's a rim rider. You get up there and let, it, let that rough side drag a little bit. Looks like uh, everything's okay now for Brad Keselowski as he moves around the outside of A.J. Allmendinger. Yeah, he was one of five drivers that came to pit road and got four tires, including his teammate Joey Logano, Eric Almirola, Paul Menard, as well as Jamie McMurray. Allmendinger in 10th, finished 7th last week. Good run for him. Yeah, A.J. told me during the offseason, felt good about his road course program, one Watkins Glen, felt good about the restrictor plate program, but they had to improve on a mile and a half tracks based on last week and this week. I think they've made some huge gains. I agree. Uh, Big Daddy's coming. Uh, that would Jeff. be Jeff Gordon. Yes, it would. <laughs> Hello. He and Matt Kenseth battling for 11th right behind Allmendinger. See, he just, that's Jeff Gordon at his best, methodically works his way through the field. Doesn't get in a hurry, doesn't take any chances, but gets there. Well, isn't it ironic that the only time a pole sitter has won the Las Vegas race <laughs> is when Kyle Busch won the pole, lost an engine, had to start at the back, and won. 
So he didn't start first, but he finished first, even though he won the poll to start. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, and the one difference between Kyle Busch then and Jeff Gordon, Kyle Busch did have laps in that race car. The first lap Jeff Gordon turned in his car was when they dropped the green flag. Looks like to me, close to 100 laps, he's going to be close to getting to the top 10. Yep, don't count him out. Yeah. Let's get an update on Jimmy Johnson's unscheduled stop from Matt. Well, the vibration is gone on the 48, Mike. That's the good news. They've looked over the wheels that came off that, and apparently there was a loose right front on the 48. And the guy, you know, this year you, they don't they don't watch and see if you got five lug nuts tight or not. And the guys have told me that if you have a loose wheel, you're not going to run very long because it's going to shake so bad. You're going to have to come to the pits. That's what happened to Jimmy Johnson. Kevin Harvick, Casey Kane, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, the first five. The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Cobalt, the next generation of tough tools, exclusively at Lowe's. 102 laps, Kevin Harvick leading by a second. Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Now back on lap two of the race, Joey Logano set the fastest lap of the race so far. Bring Sprint your Verizon or AT&T bill and turn in your old phone. They'll cut your rate plan in half at a Sprint retail store or at Sprint.com slash half price. Kevin Harvick one second up on Casey Kane. Dale Earnhardt Jr. another second back than Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. Got a good battle back here between it's been between Keselowski and, and uh, Edwards in the 19 and the 47 of Almendinger. They've been fighting it out here, nip and tuck. Actually, it's a 42 of Larson. Right. Let's go back to Tony Stewart's mishap on Pitt Road, where the team claimed they were impeded and lost a tire due to contact with another car. From the Pitt Road officiating system, here is a replay. You see Stewart's pit. And one tire being set to the side. The tire carrier comes around to grab it. And the tire he was already carrying gets knocked away. Let's bring in our Fox Rules analyst, Andy Petrie. Yeah, guys, I was just in race control reviewing this uh, replay from the pro system. And this is something that uh, is new this year. 
with this video replay system, these, uh, the NASCAR officials can review these stops. You can see that there's a point there that a tire is, is not being controlled by a crew member. That is in the rules that says that those tires have to be removed from the right side of the car to the inside half of the pit box in a controlled manner that's acceptable to NASCAR. And that's really kind of an arm's length. And you can see there is a tire that is there for a, a few moments that is not being really controlled by a crew member. The tire that got hit was being carried by a crew member, and that one had nothing to do with the penalty. Thanks, Andy. Tough break for Tony Stewart. He is a lap down in 29th place. Looked a little like the double dribble rule in basketball there. He called for that one. Basketball? Did you say something about basketball? Who's the only undefeated team in America? <laughs> are the Princeton women still undefeated? Yeah, I, th I think they are, but uh -huh. okay. the only undefeated men's team in, in America right now is the Kentucky Wildcats. Congratulations, boys. And by the way, congratulations to Rick Bird and the Belmont Bruins. They made it to the NCAA for the third year out of the last four. <laughs> How about that? Some good basketball going on yeah. right now, brother. But some hot racing here on the racetrack. Dan Earnhardt Jr. now 2.7 seconds off the lead, currently third behind Harvick and Kane. Three Chevys leading Denny Hamlin's Toyota in fourth. There's a look at Hamlin, who's come from 15th on the grid. Martin Truex Jr. rounds out the top five. Top 20 cars back through Eric Almirola are on the lead lap after 108 complete in the Cobalt 400 on Fox. Kevin Harvick still leading Las Vegas. These are all photos off social media that were shot today at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Big, huge crowd. Folks having a lot of fun posting up pictures of their day at the races. Today's Ford EcoBoost track facts. Roush Fenway Racing has seven wins. That leads all teams. 
in the history here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, where Ford won the first three Sprint Cup races, 98, 99, and 2000. Brought to you by Ford, go further. Harvick picking his way around Sam Hornish now. And that'll put that'll put Hornish two down. Yesterday, Austin Dillon did quite a job to hold off hard charging Ryan Blaney at the checkered flag of the Boyd Gaming 300 in NASCAR's Xfinity Series. He's currently running in 14th place in that Richard Childress Chevrolet. And we listened in. Motor just dropped a cylinder, I think. Something just changed in the motor. In for half back. And the driver can, that's one of the first telltale sounds. Uh, signs to a driver it's the sound these engines have that rhythm and then we talk about that rhythm that they get into and as soon as that thing changes pitch a little bit you know something's going on under the hood and just looking though at his lap times it's not like he's that far off from what the leaders are running and we are closing in on another set of green flag pit stops Kyle Larson working the top side against Matt Kenseth and Carl Edwards Jamie and Kyle Larson for the first time really today he's really searching for some grip just saying he's too loose and he wants to be tightened up on the next stop. Well I think the track temp has gone up substantially since this race started and the more it goes up the, the least amount of grip that they're going to have it might be one in more than the other but you're going to continue to look for more grip in those race tires. And you will go up high and you'll run up there for a while and then Larry pretty soon that groove will go away too. Once you rubber that thing up up high uh, that groove's going to go away too but it's going to take a little while for it to do it because not everybody's running up there. One of the pre-race favorites Jimmy Johnson finds himself a lap down after an unscheduled pit stop. Matt. Mike, the vibration's gone, but the handle has also gone away on the 48 of Johnson. It started out well, and then it slowly and slowly started to go to the free side, especially entering turn one. Now, he just said it again to Chad Canals that they need to reverse the adjustments they made on the last stop. Chad told him to adjust with the track bar adjuster inside the car. Well, when he came back on track, Larry, he was the 15th car one lap down, but he's fighting his way forward. Now he is the fourth car. Yeah, he still back. has three more drivers, but let's talk about the driver adjustable track bar. The driver can adjust it with this switch right here. If he throws the switch up, he can raise that track bar on the right rear. If he throws that switch down, he can lower it on the right rear. Now let's show you where the track bar is located at the rear of the car. This is the part that he's going to adjusting. The track bar runs all the way from the left rear to the right rear. Now what you do if you raise it, you can help the car turn, rotate better. If you lower it, that will tighten the car up. That's something that the driver can adjust from that steering wheel. Yeah, just think of it as just what Larry said. When you raise the thing up, you're going to raise it up. That's going to free the car up. When you lower it down, when you put it way down, it's going to tighten the car up. Right there, that's where Clint Boyer's switch is at, right there on that left side of the steering wheel. That right there is his radio button. They've been kind of... Uh, Boyer's had a problem with this car all weekend long. Loose in, loose in, and they just cannot get that car tightened up, getting into the corner. Kevin Harvick pa uh, passing Casey Mears, who goes two laps down. He was one of the quicker cars in practice this weekend. Each week, tune in to Race Day on Fox Sports 1 to learn who the advanced driver, advanced auto parts driver spotlight will be. Today, we caught up with Brian Vickers. Mike, at the top of the show, and there you see Brian Vickers right there in the 55 car. Right now, Brian is still on the lead lap back in the 19th position. But at the top of the show, you talked about this being a short race. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car back there one lap down with two more drivers a lap down in front of him. We're closing in on the halfway point of this race. Well, then it's not just Johnson controlling his own destiny because Kevin Harvick is going to continue to lap cars. He's closing up on Eric Almirola, the 20th place car which means Johnson would have even further to go to get into the free pass position. And right now is when he needs his car to be at its best so he can get those lap, pass those lap cars and his car's at its worst. So there's a lot of things working against the 48 right now. 
So there is Harvick Almirola just ahead. The cars that are one lap down include Clint Boyer and now Jimmy Johnson is the second car one lap down. He would benefit from a caution if he gets past Boyer if a caution would come out before Harvick laps any more cars. Kyle Larson in eighth Matt Kenseth ninth and they have traded the spot back and forth. Kyle Larson's had no shortage of people to race with. First was Martin Truex. Now it's Matt Kenseth. Well, it depends on what groove he decides to run in. He runs the top a while, and he seems like he loses ground. He gets to the bottom a while. He's just been kind of back and forth searching for a place where that car really wants to run. He hadn't found it yet. Now, Kenseth just ran a time trial type lap, where as you come past the start finish line in the dog leg, you drop down below the white line onto the apron. That's completely legal everywhere except Daytona and Talladega where that apron is out of bounds. Yeah, they've been seesawing backs and forth here. Looks like, oh man, Larson's car got way bad out of shape. And Martin Truex comes to pit road. That will take him from the lead lap. He was in, I believe, 10th place. Matt X comes to a stop in his box. Now the car like it has much of the day. The track conditions much warmer today than they were in practice on Saturday or Friday. Adjustment taking place in the back window wedge. His car once again it starts out slightly free and then it swings big time to the free side. Meanwhile the 31 of Ryan Newman and Luke Lambert told him we're going to adjust your car with just air pressure since you have adjusted with the track bar adjuster. Newman said no we need to make a bigger change. The car free on entry into turn three as he makes his way into his box. Solid run for Newman. Jamie. Jay Allmendinger saying way too loose off turn two. That's where he's been struggling the most. The car wasn't so bad early on, but as it's getting warmer, his handling is going away, and that's what we're hearing down here as the 31 completes his stop as well. Ryan Blaney, Trevor Bain in. Michael McDowell makes a stop. Jeff Gordon is in. Austin Dillon, Greg Biffle coming. Ricky Stenhouse, Jeb Burton, all making pit stops. Chris? Well, Jeff Gordon starting in the back today, moving up to 11th right now. They've been making adjustments all day long. He just told Alan Gustafson, his crew chief, that last round we made it a little bit too tight, so let's free it up a bit. Matt? Recovered well from that incident on pit road earlier in the race is the 11 of Denny Hamlin, running solidly in the top five. He said his car just didn't quite have the speed that the four of Harvick did. Balance not bad as well. Jamie. And Casey Kane says he just needs to be a bit tighter on entry. The car has been so good today. They've been solid since they unloaded off the truck. On the left side, Kevin Harvick is making his way down pit road. Harvick and Earnhardt in. Chris. Early in the race, Kevin Harvick saying that car too loose. After adjustments, he's saying that car very good. It sounds like just a slight air pressure adjustment on this stop. Jamie. And Kyle Larson wants to tighten up his car a little bit. The handling has changed quite a bit. As he gets sideways, he's down and away. Matt. A little bit more time on that left rear, the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. He said he needed more security later in the run. And the leader becomes Brad Keselowski on the left of your screen as we cycle through stops. Along with Carl Edwards, Joey Logano, Jamie McMurray, Paul Menard, and Eric Almirola. Those cars have not yet made a stop in this green flag pit sequence. And they're all drivers that pitted under that last caution. They can go a little further. You see Jimmy Johnson, I think they decided not to go as far on field as they did get those fresh tires, Matt. And we told you earlier, just Jimmy's car was not as good this run as it was earlier in the race. You can already see the chassis adjustment completed. Another swing on the left side as well. Significant changes for the 48. Chris on the 19. Brad Keselowski was running six before these pit stops. Early on, he was saying that car very loose, but as, as run went on, he's saying that car's tightening up. He's pretty happy with it. Also, Carl Edwards coming in, making a steady run from 14th up to about seventh right now. He's one of the few drivers out here that over the course of the entire run, he's saying that car pretty tight. Eric Almirola is in. That leaves Joey Logano as the last car on track in this sequence, Chris. 
Oh, Jamie Mack was so good in qualifying second round, one of the quickest cars out there, but he did tell me this morning he's been having trouble with his car being loose all weekend long. They've done everything to tighten up that car. Well, during this race, that car still loose. Regan Smith, too fast, entering the pits. That'll be a drive-through penalty. And, and, Mike, the hotter it gets, the more it exaggerates your problems. And we got another wheel here in the, sitting, sitting out in the lonely infield by itself. I'm going to have to start singing here if we keep this up. And we're hearing that is one of Brad Keselowski's wheels. Here's a look out the back of Keselowski's car. Bam. And he is penalized for an uncontrolled tire. Away it goes. And I don't Whoa. think they'll throw a caution for that, but boy, would Joey Logano love to see a caution for that tire laying out there, which belongs to his teammate's team, Brad Keselowski. Now, I said everyone had stopped. Uh, I neglected Tony Stewart, who is coming in now. Two laps down. For Stewart, and Regan Smith comes in for his drive through penalty. Yeah, I would say within the next couple of laps, you see Regan Smith serving that penalty for speeding. A drive through penalty just has to go down pit road at pit road speed. Joy Logano will have to be on pit road in the next couple of laps. You can see how bad he's getting beat with fresh tires by Casey Mears in that 13 car. 137 laps complete. Today's aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Mike, this one, the, when the crew chief and the driver and everybody, I mean, you've got to really, you've got to use all your tools in your toolbox right now. Whatever, if it's air pressure, track bar, wedge, the driver has to be telling the crew chief, I need help here, I need help. We heard him break the turn down. You got to be very specific when you get to this point in the race and your car is not exactly right with what it is you need us to do to help bring you. Him, bring him. Bang, we're going to come this time inside 19. Joey Logano giving up a lot of speed. He's about a second and a quarter a lap slower than the other lead cars. And he will be pit side this time as his teammate Brad Keselowski just served his drive through penalty for that uncontrolled tire that rolled across pit road. Yeah, well, you'll see the big, I mean, it's a big disadvantage to stay out there that long on those old tires. And you're going to see it when Kevin Harvey comes back around here as the leader. You're going to see. Caution. Well, Never mind. Well, that changes everything. It does. Caution. I think NASCAR was waiting till this thing cycled through those green stops before they threw that caution. And Logano will drive on through, I would think, or should he stop? I he think with the time of caution, he should be able to get those four tires and stay on the lead lap. Especially with where he's pitting down there near the end. Plus, he was the leader coming yes, in. So, so he yeah, should be, yeah, he should be, be able to easily stay on the lead lap. Should be fine. Well, that was one of those times when gambling paid off. Yep. Brian, where, where Brian Vickers in, gets the free pass. Where are we in, in Vegas, right? It would be. I like gambling in Vegas. Now, well, at the track. I think this is actually going to work out pretty good for Joey Logano because he has a lot fresher tires than a lot of those guys that made green flag stops. And I think a lot of those guys are going to come back in, and he should cycle back up to near the front. Now, the leaders only have eight or nine laps on their tires that they just got. <laughs> but I think all the drivers near the backside of the lead lap drivers, why not? Come to pit road and get four fresh tires. Let's get out of Chris Myers for a race recap. Joey Legato, who's back into the lead for the second time today before the caution came out, had a strong start leading 40 of the first 42 laps. Jeff Gordon, remember, had to work his way from the back all the way up inside the top 10. And the fans waving the 24 flag, saying so long on the 24th lap here in Las Vegas. Caution coming out here with Denny Hamlin. We've talked about the trouble on pit road, and you can see Hamlin got a little bit of damage to that left front corner, but not enough to hurt him. It's really difficult to work your way onto pit road. Look at Dell Jr. barely getting inside of that commitment cone. Dale Earnhardt Jr. involved Jimmy Johnson, who was leading and led the most laps in the first half of this race. That loose wheel cost him, went a lap down. Now two down, pit road is open. 
We know what he's doing. He's enjoying the race, but what should the drivers do? I think a lot of them are going to have to pit, Chris. We saw in that Xfinity race yesterday, new tires make a big difference. Ryan Blaney got him, made a charge to the front, almost won that race. I'd pit. Why wouldn't you always take four tires? What's the time difference? What's the gamble? Well, if you only got six, eight laps, green flag laps on your tires, you'll probably stay out on them because you need that track position. But the fresher tires will definitely help move you up through the field. And you see you got a lot of takers here with only seven or eight laps on their tires already to pit road. And seven leaders already. We had 10 in all of last year's race here in Las Vegas with 11 lead changes. Jamie Little. And the 31's in the 42, the 11, they're all takers. The 42 at Kyle Larson just wanting to be tightened up a bit, Matt. The 11 came in, Denny Hamlin, they were debating on the radio, he and crew chief Dave Rogers over taking tires, but also working on that left front area where he's got the pushed in headlight area. But they did, Denny decided he just wanted to leave it alone, Chris. All right, thank you very much. Three cautions so far in this race with only one driver out of the race. 141 laps in, so 126 to go live in Las Vegas. Back here live, time for the NASCAR on Fox just past the mid-race report time frame. It signals clear Hendrick Motorsports was going to be strong in the Chevys with Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, who was leading before a loose wheel. He was a co-favorite coming in along with Kevin Harvick. Daryl, who are you keeping an eye on in the second half of the race? Chris, you know how when you just uh, you got a good feeling about something or someone? I just got a good feeling about Martin Truex Jr. Hanging around that top five, single car team furniture row, Cole Pern, they go to victory circle. Uh, just look right ahead of uh, yourself there, Daryl. That's Kevin Harvick, and what a strong car Kevin has. We thought there, were, there was a little bit of a chink in their armor on Friday after qualifying, not up in the top ten where they usually are, but he's proven this car is rocket fast. He consistently is running the best lap times. Larry? Michael Dale Earnhardt Jr. almost won this race, ran out of gas on the last lap. Maybe he gets his first win here in Las Vegas. Carl Edwards started 14th, has worked his way up to 6th, and all these drivers complaining that their car is too loose today. Carl Edwards a little bit on the tight side, looking for his first win at JGR. 
Joey Logano's led the most laps so far today. He has two wins on mile and a half super speedways. They both come in the last dozen races. I don't think he's done leading just yet. And that's our Fox mid race report as we get ready to go back to green after this third caution flag of the day for the tire out in the grass after green flag pit stops. 144 complete this time by Kevin Harvick chooses the inside against Casey Kane. Martin Truex, Earnhardt, Logano, Edwards, Menard, Newman, Gordon, and Hamlin, the top 10. Yeah. Hamlin with a launch and a run on the outside as up front, it's a dogfight for the lead. But look at Joy Logano on that 22 car. It definitely paid dividends what they pulled off there because he has fresher tires than anyone. Martin Truex, who led one lap in all of 2014, has turned it around. He led 30 in the Sprint Unlimited at Daytona, and he is leading Las Vegas. Push it, son. Push right, it. Smooth. Take care of the hot rod. He's doing exactly what he needs to be doing. Gassing that bad boy up and leading him around here. <laughs> Old four car gets a pretty good launch though. Yes, he does. Single file now all the way back through the first 16 spots. Things settling down just a bit here past the midway point. Michael Annette has hit the wall though. He pounded it. He knocked yep. the fire out. It went off turn four there. We saw remember we he spun out in practice on Friday. He spun down here, the one right the wall at the front here. Casey Kane inside of Logano for third. Wow, did you Damn. see that move? Harvey, he gassed that thing up and he drove by the outside of Martin Truex Jr. and said, just drove by him. That's not the first time we've seen that move today, and I'll bet it's not the last. Wow, what a move. Let's first show you what happened to Michael Annette. Now, this is well away from the lead. Yeah, he's right back here. 46 car, Michael Annette, and you'll see me. Gets up the hill, up the hill, up the hill. I think you'll see the back end step out, step out, and then bam. Exiting turn four. But watch this, watch this power move right here, Mike. I mean, this is just getting back in the gas, staying in it, and never lifting. Look at that throttle trace, wide open. And away he goes. Nothing you can do to defend that. Nope. Yeah, we've heard the report so many drivers just couldn't stay in the throttle on the exit of the corner of the car to get loose. No problem there with Harvick in that four car. No, sir. I mean, he's shot to the lead and pull it away. Harvick the leader, Truex second, Casey Kane, Joey Logano, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's ride along and go for the Dale Jr. nationwide inside ride. That's your inside ride with Dale Jr. as he closes up on Joey Logano for fourth place with 115 laps to go. Is that J.J. Yaley who just bounced off the wall at turn four? Somebody up there just no, hit the wall going into three. I couldn't tell who it was. Sorry, that's Michael Annette. Who already uh, had had again. a problem, yes. Yep. And a car looking uh, painted very much like the one Marty Robbins used to run in 
the old Winston Cup series and that finally makes his way to pit road. Oh that right front's at a bad angle looks like he's really yeah he uh, done damage there pounded it pretty good really did. A couple of drivers that's had some issues. Brad Keselowski had that own controlled tire under a green flag pit stop. But right now, Brad is back in the 18th position. But more importantly, he's the first driver one lap down. So should we get a caution? But we're closing in on 100 laps to go. He would be the driver back on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson, though, he needs to get by Keselowski. He's the next driver one lap. Yeah, down. that's going to be a real battle right there to who's can, who can get in the lucky dog position. The other big story is Jeff Gordon who had to start last after colliding with Danica Patrick on the very last lap of practice yesterday. He had to go to a backup car and from the tail end of the field he has now made it into the top 10 for the first time today. Pretty uneventful day. Good solid pit stops for and they've, they've taken four tires a lot and uh, got him right up there inside the top 10 now. Second place Truex and Kane. It's like Martin's car is giving up just a little bit here and it uh, looks like there might be some problem with the 42 he's off the pace. Kyle Larson had a very promising practice. See his RPM are down a good bit. It should be up around 9000. Well, he's going to get close to that so not sure what is it. But his lap time is over a second a lap off. Now he's dropped five six positions Jamie. And all he's really saying he's just super super loose car is a handful right now hard to hang on but not reporting anything internally wrong with the 42 just yet. Yeah it, well he's definitely slower and I know when we had a shot of him earlier before the pit stops he was sideways a couple times getting in the corner maybe it's just gotten so loose he can't get the gas down. He's back up to 8800 RPM on the straightaway that time so. Hopefully that's something they can improve on. He's right now in 15th place. But still well on the lead lap. Kevin Harvick your leader. The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years, Navy Federal Credit Union. 
105 laps to go. Let's look at today's Toyota top performers. Denny Hamlin uh, had to come from midfield. Currently he's sixth. His teammate Carl Edwards seventh. Matt Kenseth 13th. And great to see Brian Vickers back behind the wheel. His first race back and he is currently 17th uh, for Michael Walter racing. They're your Toyota top performers with 104 to go. Kevin Harvick out in front by 1.9 seconds. And let's check in on some of the contenders today down on pit road. Matt. Denny Hamlin, much like last week, a good car, just lacking a little bit of speed. Currently running six now. Denny waved off Dave Rogers on the last stop as far as fixing the punched in headlight cover on that left front. And then after much debate back and forth, I believe Denny thinks now that damage much more severe. The last two stops they put tape on it. It's more of a slice that continues to leak more and more air, Jamie. And Matt Kenseth started this race six. Now I talked to his crew chief Jason Ratcliffe this morning. He said last week in Atlanta, the first mile and a half track this year, we were too loose and we learned from that. Well, same problem today. He is so loose. Matt just now saying the car is about a seven to eight on a scale of one to ten loose. So he needs a handle on this, Chris. Well, Greg Biffle's been running 16th all day. That's exactly where he started. And checking in with the team, they said he's just been tight. The front end of that car not really doing much. Greg Biffle actually saying the front of that car feeling pretty numb. So this team just trying to go through a lot of adjustments. Michael? Guys, I talked about Kevin Harvick being the car to beat, but a guy that might can beat him is Casey Kane. This car's gotten better and better all day long. He's been able to run anywhere on the racetrack, which helps you cut through traffic. He's also been cutting into that lead that Kevin Harvick enjoys. I think you hear all these guys talking about loose, loose, loose. That's kind of the history of this joint as you get down near the end of it. Really, really loose in, and Harley can get the gas down to get off. So loose is a big problem right now. Riding with Kevin Harvick, who's now led 64 laps, the most of all drivers. He has led more laps in his 13 mile and a half races in the number four than in all of his prior career starts. Yeah, we just saw uh, Carl Edwards in the uh, 19 car go around Denny Hamlin in the 11 there to take over the sixth spot. But Mike, talking about Kevin Harvick, two second place finishes to start the year. And if you add that into the last three races of last year, five top two finishes, including a couple of wins at the end of last year. Yeah, th there's no question about it. From this from this time last year until this time this year, that's been the fastest car on the racetrack week in and week out. See why one of the most revered names in NASCAR trusts the most winning name in NASCAR at Chevy.com slash Dale Jr. Harvick, Kane, Truex, and Earnhardt, the front four, all in Chevrolets right now. Then Joey Logano's Ford and Carl Edwards Toyota are the top half dozen with just inside 100 laps to go. Two drivers who are just waiting for a chance. Brad Keselowski and Jimmy Johnson. They are each one lap down. They are the first two cars one lap down and should a caution wave. One of them would get back on the lead lap. And if not green flag pit stops are coming up soon. Yeah Martin Truex Jr. in the 78 should be the first to have to come to pit road.
Jimmy Johnson wanted a caution flag. He didn't want to be the caution flag. Here's what happened. It's about the most dreaded sound a driver can hear. I watch Johnson behind him. Jeff Gordon gets in the back of Jeb Burton and turns Burton into the wall. Yeah, Burton was slowing down and uh, 24 got in. Pits are open, Jamie. Casey Kane saying he's pretty good now. I can control it from here. Air pressure and four tires is it. Matt? The 88 Dale Jr. much better. This run, the car not as free. The 78 of Martin Truex Jr., he said if we could just fix my entry, we would have a car for them. Just way too free, Chris. Kevin Harvick still really happy with the balance on that car, but just in the last five laps, he did say he was starting to lose the front end. Here's the advanced auto parts race off pit road. This could be pivotal as Kevin Harvick edges Casey Kane to the end of the pit lane. Everybody with four tire changes. Yeah, this pretty much puts everybody on even ground with what we know at least one more pit stop. That's your advanced auto parts race off pit road. Nice job by Matt Kenseth's crew. Yeah, not so good for uh, Martin Truex Jr. Brad Kozlowski got the break he needed. He got the free pass. He's back on the lead lap. Cole Wright coming your way with this Fox Sports Live update. Time now for three things you need to know. NFL free agent Chris Johnson is shot in the shoulder this morning during a drive-by shooting in Orlando, Florida. Another passenger in his car was killed. In other NFL news, defensive tackle and Dominican Sue is expected to ink a $114 million deal with Miami. It would make Sue the highest paid defensive player in all the league. And for a complete recap of the Cobalt 400, including post-race interviews, be sure to catch Fox Sports Live tonight following Major League Soccer. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the dependable, long-lasting Chevy Silverado. And by Advance Auto Parts, the brand for guys who love getting under the hood. We're under caution with 92 laps to go in Las Vegas. Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. 
Kevin Harvick, five top two finishes, the most by any Sprint Cup driver since 2006. Bring Sprint your Verizon or AT&T bill. Turn in your old phone. They'll cut your rate plan in half at a Sprint retail store or Sprint.com slash half price. I'll tell you what. Un a lot of uncontrolled tires here. They're just picking a fine time to leave me loose wheels. They're everywhere. It's, I haven't seen this many loose wheels since Dave Blaine in Atlanta a few years ago. And Jeff Gordon, after having to go to a backup car after a practice crash on the last lap of practice, Danica Patrick spun in front of him, and he got into the back of Jeb Burton. Good bit of Johnson cut a tire and hit the wall. Good bit of damage. Good bit of damage on the front of that 24. That'll definitely end. What I don't like is how that uh, hood is kind of sitting there, and the yep. wind's going to get under that. Now, the good and bad for Penske Racing, the bad is Joey Logano got nabbed for speeding on pit road. He'll have to start tail into the longest line. Yeah, that's the final one. I've got to get a number here. Yeah, you know the camera line is the white line before we get there, right? No, I just kept going. All right, that's what got him in trouble. He's in the next to the last pit box leaving, and that last segment that he was talking about in pit out, it's only 59 feet long. So I think he thought once you get to that line where you win the bad life pit road that you're clear. You still have one more segment. So he has a penalty, but his teammate Brad Keselowski got the free pass and is back on the lead lap. Here's what Steve Burns is tweeting about, that huge American flag surrounded by flags of all the branches of the armed services in turns three and four. Remember, we're right adjacent Nellis Air Force Base where the Thunderbirds flew overhead in pre-race, and we've been watching a great air show all weekend courtesy of our United States Air Force. Yeah, you get a race and an air show. I mean, this place is incredible, and they do it all, they do it all night, all day. It's a, quite amazing. I wow, think here we go. I think we're about to have a show on this restart, too. Once again, Harvick and Kane from the front row. Three, four Whoa. wide, three wide into turn one. Look like McMurray in that one car just working the high side. He's going by three or four cars through one and two. That's just forcing your way through right there. That's making a hole where there really isn't any. He got a great launch on the high side. Great place to try and take advantage. Still coming toward the front. Kane, Hamlin, McMurray all working the high side as Kevin Harvick leads them. I think it's pretty obvious they got that four car right where it needs to be. I mean, that thing trucks off and leaves the field in, a, in, in one lap. He's got a huge lead. You know, Denny Hamlin punches his way right up into the top three, Larry. And his teammate, he's been working on the top ten all day long, as now we see Dale Earnhardt Jr. battling Denny Hamlin back for that spot. But Carl Edwards right behind them in that 19 car. He's found his way to the top five. And Carl's been running a nice, steady race. He and Darren Grubb got their car looking good right now. So Harvick enjoys a one second lead on Casey Kane. Things are packed pretty tightly from there on back as Matt Kenseth works Ryan Newman. Sounds like a good time for a Fox NASCAR crank it up.
two is one back with you. Clear, one back, 18 on the line. 17 lead lap cars. Kevin Harvick in front of Casey Kane by two seconds. You know what I like about Kevin Harvick? He can be a part of the show like he was yesterday for the Xfinity race up here, or he can be the show like he is today, and he <laughs> is putting on a show right now. Driving clinic. Harvick, Kane, Earnhardt, Hamlin, and Edwards at Chevy versus Toyota for the top five. We're under caution again. Jimmy Johnson coming off turn number four, pounded the wall after cutting down a right front tire. And from ninth place on back, we had a number of takers on pit road during this fifth caution flag of the day. Yeah, this does not put them into a window to make it to the end, but here's the reason we're under caution. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 again. Yeah, you hear the tire just goes down. I, I kind of think someone's cutting the tire down. Hit it again, guys. I know he's got damage from that earlier wreck, but. A tough day for Jimmy Johnson in Las Vegas.
The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Sprint. Spring is your Verizon or AT&T bill and will cut your rate plan in half. Visit Sprint.com forward slash half price and by McDonald's. 78 laps to go under the fifth caution of the day. Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Kevin Harvick has led the most laps today, almost twice as many as Joey Logano. Bring Sprint your Verizon or AT&T bill. Turn in your old phone. They'll cut your rate plan in half at a Sprint store or Sprint.com slash half price. But well, once again, Joey Logano has been gigged for speeding on pit road. This time it was entering the pit lane. But in start it, tail end. isn't it interesting that uh, that the guys go back to the hotel. They look at their four car there of Kevin Harvick. They look at it on on tape. They see a problem with the car. He's not very good in practice. They come out Saturday morning and they make some adjustments in the car, and that car has been fast ever since. Rodney Childers and those guys, they studied the tapes, they look at the car, they made some changes, and that thing has been on fire ever since. Getting ready to restart. Let's get out of Matt Yoakum for a nationwide performance update on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mike, a great run, and you can hear the enthusiasm in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s voice. In fact, a few moments ago, he told his team to tell Harvick to quit looking in the mirror and worrying about Jr. He wants to get a good run, Harvick get a good run, so then they can move on by his teammate, the five of Kane. His average finish here, Matt, eighth since he joined Hendrick Motorsports. That's his best average at any track in that period and looks like we're a lap away from a restart here. Harvick Kane, Earnhardt Hamlin, Edwards McMurray, Truex and Kenseth Newman and Biffle will be your top 10. We have 18 cars on the lead lap including Brian Scott. Wednesday the Big East Tournament tips off. Marquette takes on Seton Hall 7 p.m. Eastern time followed by Creighton against DePaul at 930 Eastern. The Big East Tournament presented by New York Life beginning Wednesday and the only place you'll see it is Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. March just, Madness. Yes. Just to kind of set the stage here, we'll be getting the green with about 76 laps to go. We heard a lot of the crew chiefs tell their drivers we're not to our window. What they mean is that we get to about lap 214 or 215, you pit then you can make it to the end. The top eight drivers stayed out with eight laps on their tires. We had 10 lead lap drivers that actually came to pit road. So that's about 25 more laps before that uh, single pit window will open. Coca-Cola, official soft drink of NASCAR. Here's how the Coca-Cola racing family is performing today. Denny Hamlin leading that group. Here's Matt. Cobalt guys working underneath the hood of the 48. Jimmy, any idea after the guys have looked at the damage, what keeps causing your issues with the right front blowing? Yeah, the first one, they said the bead blew on it. Um, and we don't have any brake temp here, so I don't know what, what could have caused that. That's kind of a freak deal. Um, the second one, it went soft, so there could have been, you know, some damage that caused it or a rub or something like that, and it went soft going into turn three, and I hit the wall, unfortunately. So, uh, disappointing. We certainly had an awesome race car. Wish that we could have won this Cobalt race in the Cobalt car, but we'll come back next week. Jimmy Johnson under repair in the garage. Two of his last three DNFs, or did not finishes, have been due to blown tires. 76 laps to go. Here's your Advocare race summary. Kevin Harvick is the first of 18 cars on the lead lap. He's one of eight leaders, 13 lead changes. We've had five cautions for 24 laps. Only one car in the garage. That is Alex Bowman, uh, who lost uh, an engine early. And Jimmy Johnson uh, joins him in the garage after tire woes. Yeah, um, Larry knows, and there's a lot of speed in, in messing with the tires, the camera and the tires and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of speed, right? A lot of good handling characteristics just messing with the camera and the tire. But if you abuse it, you're going to lose it. But to Jimmy's point, we've been looking at telemetry for two days, and we have not seen a lot of brake uses, which creates a lot of heat, and that bead is what seals that tire to that steel wheel where there's a lot of heat that's transferred. It'll be 75 laps to go and at least one more pit stop. We've had five caution flags so far, eight different leaders. But recently in this race, Kevin Harvick has had it all his way. Let's see on the restart. I mean, the last restart in one lap, he had a huge lead. Let's see what he does on this restart. Casey Kane hanging with him pretty good. Dale Jr. looks like he might give, Ke give Kevin a little, Kevin Harvick a little shove in its first turn. Let's see if he opens up that gap like he has the last couple of restarts. 
There he wow, goes. Wow, look just, at the launch. He gets off turn that, two. That's just that's incredible. He's done that uh, the last couple of restarts. Just really gets out of the corner better than anybody. We saw that when he fl flew around the outside of Martin Truex earlier. Carl Edwards hanging tough on the bottom right behind Earnhardt. But now he's locked in. Oh, car bouncing off the wall. Yeah, that's that is Kane. Casey Kane. Just, as he uh, battled Edwards. And Truex in the 78 is going to take advantage of that. Go to the inside. They're not, get they're not done up. yet, guys. They're not done yet. That's Carl Edwards going around. He's going to behind him inside. Save it. Almost. Oh, my God. Caution's out. Caution's out. I think there was a lot of uh, motion going on between uh, Casey Kane in the 5 and 19 of Carl Edwards. They were not. Kane was not happy with Edwards. Lit up here. And it all started in turn number four when uh, Casey Kane got up against the wall. And then everybody go back, scrambled. Take, let's take a look at this, Mike, because I think you're going to see some some uh, Casey Kane not happy with Carl Edwards here. Carl Edwards on the 19 on the inside. He goes up, 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 Ooh. up right there. He forces Casey Kane in the wall, but it's not over with. Watch Kane. He comes down on him. Here comes Martin Truex in the 78 on the inside. But when they get down here to the corner, I don't think these two guys were real happy with each other. And bam. That tipped any Hamlin. Got Hamlin and a little Edwards bit too. Almost saved it right here. Tempers flare as we ride with Clint right, Boyer. Keep coming. He's spinning down. He's spinning down. He's spinning down. It's going to be fine. Around the bottom. Get low. Don't get to the apron though. Just stay low. Stay low. You'll be fine. Clear low. You're fine. Yellow's out. Sixth caution flag of the day. You know, we said in our break, uh, Mike, when we had that last concert, it looks like we're in for some cautions here for a little while because it gets down the end, the intensity picks up, and you got this going on. And, Jamie, what about the five group? Man, they had a good car all day long. They've just been making the right adjustments on it. You could see the right side damage now. Casey saying, I hit flat, but, man, I hit hard. So Keith Rod and his crew chief called him down pit road to fix the right side damage on his five machine. Yeah, his right front's uh, towed in, or not towed in, but caved in pretty hard. So he's got a lot of damage on the right front of that five car. And we just saw a shot of Carl Edwards' 19 car. It's got serious damage, too. Kane pretty much pancaked the wall. He slapped it hard, but, but hit evenly at both ends. Not sure if that's good or bad. Yeah, but the, he's kind of got damage on both sides, but the right front looked the worst to me because it was knocked in pretty good. Two contenders for the win. In trouble here as the 19 of Carl Edwards got into Casey Kane and then went around.
The Cobalt 400 on Fox is sponsored by Cobalt, the next generation of tough tools, exclusively at Lowe's. Under caution with 70 laps to go, Kevin Harvick, your race leader, as you watch the field file by under caution from the Goodyear airship. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Carl Edwards has taken his Toyota to the garage area with damage after colliding with Casey Kane. Now there are the way the odds locked in at the green flag. Jimmy Johnson was a four to one favorite. Uh, Kevin Harvick four and a half to one. He's done. Jeff Gordon uh, has a lot of damage. Gordon is he's got uh, he's got damage. Joey he's, Logano. He's been in trouble a couple times. twice. Uh, I don't see Brad Keselowski. They keep hitting pit road every time it's open. Daryl just making know. major adjustments on that car. He was on pit road that time. We're narrowing it down to some favorites. <laughs> no, who's not on that list? Denny Hamlin. He got a little damage in that uh, fiasco down here True. in turn one. Oh, how much? We'll find out. Here's a little uh, audio from Denny Hamlin's team. It in the quarter panel is not completely tough. I think we need, you know, we got to stay where we're at. We're in a decent spot here. Heck, that thing's going to make so much side force, not going to want to do an entry. Looks good. Denny Hamlin came into this race a 15-to-1 shot. He is fourth. We'll see how it plays out. I love these. I, I love overhead shots. Aerial shots are so cool. I love this crowd. Wow. Look at that grandstand. We had a huge, a huge crowd Friday for pole day. Nice crowd for yesterday's race, and here we go. 69 laps to go. We're still about 20 laps shy of the one stop fuel window. If Dale Jr. looks over real quick. He can see that that four car is freaky fast. Well, Jr. got a good restart this time. Yep, the four he, didn't get off of two that time like he has the last couple of restarts, but uh, not to worry. I don't think he'll gas her up here. Boy, everybody's gassing it up. They know they're trying to take advantage of this restart. Boy, Harvick just didn't. He's just not going like he has the last couple of restarts. Hamlin coming from third. Then it's Truex. Larson back in play in fifth. Then Newman, Allmendinger, and McMurray. We heard the report on Kyle Larson in that 42 car that he couldn't even think about driving. It was all over the place. And here he is. Major adjustments back up in the top five. You just got to get them right at the right time. That's all you got to do. Just hang on to her. We'll get it right for you. And they have helped that 42 a bunch. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads his fourth lap of the day from Harvick, Truex, and Hamlin. And you know all those people we were showing in the stands? They're all standing up and waving at Dale Jr. right now. Not for long. Here comes Harvick off turn two, and he's got it back. You know, I think staying out on tires, and maybe Harvick didn't have his tires cleaned up real good, and he couldn't get going on that last restart. But once he got them cleaned up, he took off. Brad Keselowski trying to become a factor in this race as he tracks his teammate Joey Logano. They're right behind the 47 of Allmendinger. And both those drivers are back in the top 10. Joey Logano with two pit road speeding penalties and Keselowski with the own controlled tire penalty. Nice run for Allmendinger today. He's in eighth place. Let's have a look back at why the sixth caution flag came out. With Carl Edwards and Casey Kane getting together here off turn number four. Kane bouncing hard off the wall and then off Edwards, and this continued down into turn one. And Edwards almost making a save here, but the caution came out, Matt. And Carl sitting in the car. You've had a chance to look at the video, Carl. Your thoughts on what happened? Just uh, racing as hard as I can and. Um... It's completely my fault. Casey did a good job. I just got sucked up into him there off of four and um, tore up the right side a little bit, got loose into one, and that was it. But uh, I feel bad. Comcast Business came on in a big way. And that's definitely my fault. I feel bad for Casey, too. So we'll get it fixed and hopefully get back out there. Kane's car was able to be repaired and continued. Edwards is in the garage, currently posted in 40th place. Kane is still on the lead lap. 
Yeah, Mike, he's back in 16th, and I'm looking at his lap times. He's well over a half a second off. I just like it, though, with the car. He owned it. Hey, that was my bad. I got into Casey, got him in the wall. The two good cars. Feels bad about it. Paul Menard rises to 11th, trying to hold back Matt Kenseth. They are six seconds off the lead, and here's the third place race. Denny Hamlin passing Martin Truex. They're about two and a half back. Yeah, Denny Hamlin's car is beginning to look a little bit like a short track car, but it's definitely <laughs> not hurt the performance at 11 car. Got, got damage on the left front, got damage on the right rear, got damage everywhere, but he's going somewhere. Two laps to go, and Larry, if we stay green, we're what about 10 or so laps away? Yeah, again, Mike, we need to get to about lap 215 to 220 to really be safely in that window, and that should the caution come out. If the caution does not come out, we're going to have to see some drivers coming to pit road somewhere around lap 235 to 240. I watched that four car, Larry, and, and Mike, he's got a tenth to two tenths in the bank every lap. He runs 70s and 80s, everybody runs 90s and flats. The road racer from Los Gatos, California, A.J. Allmendinger, just keeps coming. He's up to eighth place as he passes Jamie McMurray. McMurray's teammate Kyle Larson now pretty solidly in the top five. Ryan Newman half a second behind him. I think what they did for Larson, what has helped him is he's able to run the bottom. He was trying to run the top. It just was not working. They've got him tightened up now, and he can hang in the bottom, and he's making better lap times. And what a great return for Brian Vickers. He got a couple of free passes early to get back on the lead lap, but Jamie, 13th, good run. What a story it is for Brian Vickers. Heart surgery, first race back. They started the race 28th, and he said the car was just fine. They just didn't have the speed, and that's what he was looking for. But they've been taking a swing at it all day, and he's been fighting his way. This is great for a guy who said he was just happy to be back in a car going 200 miles per hour. Mike, he didn't know if it would ever happen again. No, but Jamie, the thing about it, this is a great test for Ryan Vickers. First, remember, that car ran eighth last week at Atlanta with Brian, with the Moffat in the thing. Today it's hot. This is a pretty tough race, pretty fast pace, and he's hanging there physically without any problems. Joey Logano trying to march back to the front. He led a lot of laps early in this race, fighting for ninth here, Chris. Yeah, good battle right there between Joey Logano and Jamie McMurray. Jamie McMurray, another car who started up near the front but slid back to uh, just outside the top 15, saying that car was just loose for the majority of the first half of this race, really all weekend long. But finally, finally, they have tightened that car up, and he finally feels like he has something to fight with these last uh, 50 or so laps. This is a good run for Jamie McMurray because they need this. We've talked about how Jeff Gordon started 2015 off. Jimmy McMurray not even a finish in the top 25 in those first two races. So Kevin Harvick, your leader, has one second on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Harvick first overall, first Chevrolet. Denny Hamlin, the first Toyota, is third. And Brad Keselowski is the first Ford in seventh place. Mike, as I watch our leader, Kevin Harvick, his car is dropping off a little bit and, and Dale Jr. is picking up a little bit. That gap that Harvey had is closing a little bit. We'll see if he can get to him as uh, if we take a little break and come back and see where they are. 55 laps to go in Las Vegas. These two finished one, two, three times last season.
Next time by 50 laps to go in the Cobalt 400 at Las Vegas. Kevin Harvick, his lead had dropped to about a second over Dale Earnhardt Jr. Harvick reporting the car was very tight in the middle of turns three and four, but now he's picked it up. 1.6 seconds is his advantage right now over Earnhardt. He has 2.8 on Denny Hamlin. Yeah, watch Kevin. He's slowed way down for two or three laps. I said, what's he doing? I asked Larry, maybe we saved him fuel. No, no reason to. Slow down for two or three laps. Now he's back up to speed again and, and actually opening that lead back up. Yeah, no matter what the scenario, every driver has to make one more stop. But when I look at our top four drivers right now, Harvick, Earnhardt Jr., Hamlin, and Truex Jr., they pitted on 173. The fuel window, they should be able to go to 225, but we've had about 16 cautions. So they should be able to go to somewhere between lap 230 and 235 before making a green flag stop. Here are the pit stops of the top five when they last came in. So Kyle Larson was the last of those to pit by quite a margin. Jimmy Johnson returned to the racetrack, made two or three moderate speed laps, came in for tires, and now goes back onto the track 29 laps down. So Alex Bowman, the only car out of the race. Carl Edwards also in the garage with crash damage. Yeah, Kyle Larson should be able to go to lap 240, but I think what we're going to get into with this being the last stop, you can't just stay out there and get beat on those fresh tires. I think the good thing about the 42, Jamie, what are they saying about that car? They need to work on it? Well, it's getting better. They're not going to give up on working on it quite yet, but they have been taking big swings with Wedge to help the car to tighten him up because he was wrecking loose earlier. Remember, we thought something was wrong with the car, with the engine perhaps, so they've definitely taken some big swings and he's going in the right direction. You know, there's another driver right behind him, Ryan Newman, that we've not said a lot about. They've just been solid with this 31 car. The man that finished second in the points last year to Kevin Harvick. Right now, Ryan is sitting there in the sixth position, and he's on the same pit cycle as Kyle Larson. He pitted at 187. That should give those guys a slight advantage. I mean, what's that? It's several different, uh, several laps less on their tires than the guys are chasing. Should give them a little bit of an advantage. 18 cars on the lead lap back to Jeff Gordon, who is a bit off pace. He's running about seven tenths of a second slower than the leaders with that aerodynamic damage to his number 24 after he got in the back of Jeff Burton when Jimmy Johnson lost the first of two tires and got into the wall. Harvick has been flawless. Yes, Joey Logano led uh, most of the first 47 laps, but once Kevin Harvick got to the front, he's been hard to handle. Yeah, they didn't get a good qualifying lap in, and they were very unhappy with their effort in qualifying. But as I said earlier, they worked on that car Saturday morning, and he was fast in practice, and he's been backing it up in the race. Now, you're riding with Brad Keselowski in the two car, and this is a classic case of very fresh tires because Brad was on pit road that last caution hit pit road at lap 195 and, and it's so and you can see it I mean he's passing he's better than the guys are in front of him because his tires are a little bit better Ricky Stenhouse last time by in turns three and four had the slide for life up against the wall he has been where I mean he has been right up against that wall just about all day uh, and you can see here as he comes off turn four, tries to come off turn four. He about, he almost lost it there. I think the wall saved him actually, but that's where he's been most of the day. Got up in that gray stuff, and, and I think you're right, Daryl, getting the right rear corner of that car against the wall, straightened him out. Straightened him up. Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex for third. Looks like Hamlin's just, a, or it looks like Truex just a little bit better than Hamlin right now. That team that Martin Truex Jr. drives for Furniture Row, this is their 10th year. Martin comes in here fifth in the points. This is the highest they have ever had a driver in the existence of that team in the points. Got two top tens for the young man. He's uh, off to a great start, and it really feels good. I'm Larry, that's him run well. Excuse me, Larry, that's the only team that's based outside of the Carolinas. They're in Denver, Colorado, with this three-race West Coast swing. Vegas this week. Then we, we move on to Phoenix and then uh, Orange County, California. 
is do they have any advantage being located closer on these three races? It, at least everything can go back home every week. When you look at all the other teams out of Charlotte, most of their people, most of their, their haulers and equipment stays out on the West Coast, and they're just shuffling cars and engines back and forth between the different races. So well, it might be a logistical advantage, but it would be slight. Yeah. Slight, very yeah. slight. Todd Bar Barrier was the crew chief on this car last year. Cole Pern has been Todd's engineer for a number of years. Cole Pern is now the crew chief. And Martin told me, he said, Cole is taking all the information we're getting from uh, Childress's Alliance and applying it to the car, and it's really paying off. It's only good information if you utilize it. Yep. Now, they're about four seconds off the lead. There's Kevin Harvick with 40 laps to go. Splitting that difference is Dale Earnhardt Jr. in second, two seconds back. Just remember last year here, this car was very dominant, and they had a hub failure. They, w they went to a number of races early last year, uh, Rodney Childers in this group, and they had gremlins, little things here, little things there. They even had some pit crew issues that they had to work through. But once they got everything worked out, that car has been flawless. But remember, Darrell, it was a startup team, all new personnel. They built all new cars, had all new equipment. They didn't carry hardly anything over uh, from Stuart Haas. Rodney Childers came in there, kind of cleaned house, and said, we want to build new, and we're going to make it work. And they I, ended up Sprint Cup champions. Yeah, I think, I think the second year is the tougher year. Because when everything's brand new, it's exciting, man. This is new. We're doing it. We got new cars. We got new this. We got new. The second year, keeping that momentum going and keeping that drive and that desire going, that's the tough year. Just a reminder, we're closing in on green flag pit stops for our top four drivers. But I still believe, and now we're actually seeing Matt Kenseth in this 20 car hit pit road. I think once we see an outbreak of pit stops, you'll see a little bit of an epidemic. Jamie. And Matt Kenseth is now saying. His car has gotten a lot tighter than loose, so it swung the opposite direction. He's been trying to work on it from inside the race car, so they'll help free him up here for the last run, fill him up with Sunoco fuel, and off he goes. Here comes Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin to the pit lane, nose to tail. Well, the, the track will get tighter. It was loose at the at when it was at its hottest. That was when it was loose. Track's cooling down. It's getting later in the afternoon. It's getting tighter. Matt. Martin Trix Jr. says the entry now is good. The problem, though, has moved to the center. Now it's tight. Center to exit. Down in three and four. Air pressure change. They're also going to make a chassis adjustment to try to make the winning move and get this car back to victory lane. You can see the adjustment there. The 11 at Denny Hamlin. He's pitting as well. Chris, what is it you're in? Here comes Harvick and Earnhardt in the pit lane. The leaders are in. Chris. Great run by Kevin Harvick today, coming from 18th all the way up to the front. On this last run, he said the car was a little bit tight in three and four. Crew Chief Rodney Childers just said, back it down a little bit. Matt? Dale Jr. was concerned he might have chunked the left front. He told Greg Ives to try to take a look if he can. They were going to go right side tires only. His car really good on that run. He had eased down on the track bar inside the car, Chris. Jamie McMurray having his hands full most of the day with a very loose race car. Now finally has it where he wants, and he's up into the top ten. Jamie. A.J. Allmendinger on his way in. He has had a nice day for a team who called mile-and-a-half tracks their worst effort last year. They were excited to come back here, had a top ten finish last week at Atlanta. The car's kind of been a little bit all over the map, but gotten better for the 47 machine. And the 27 of Paul Menard in his handling has been decent. They've been working on it, helping him jump up there and run in the top 10. Trevor Bain, J.J. Yaley, Ryan Blaney, and Landon Castle in the pit lane. Castle, who started the season with two last place finishes. That had never happened before. Jamie. And Brian Vickers, we talked about his return to racing. Very nice run today, running in the top 15, saying the car is good off the turns. Just need to carry a little bit more speed into the corners. There's your chassis adjustment, right sides, and he goes away, almost takes the fuel can with him. Ryan Newman now the race leader with Brad Keselowski and Kyle Larson. Larry, how long can they afford to stay out? Yeah, he can probably go another eight to ten laps as far as fuel. You know, I was just going to say that uh, Junior, I think, only took two tires on his pit stop. Took two. Two tires and was three seconds back as we cycle through stops. Austin Dillon, yesterday's winner, making his stop. 
But here's the problem. Right now he's running 30-30. Harvick, not far behind him, is running 29-90s. Yeah, I, 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 when I saw that, that he took two tires, I watched. I thought, I said, why did he only take two? Uh, I guess they wanted to try to get out front and see if they could hold him off. Kyle Larson has not pitted yet in the 42. Greg Biffle is in. So is David Reagan. There's your leader, Ryan Newman. Yeah, Kyle Larson, can, up on Keselowski. Kyle Larson can go just as far as Ryan Newman in that 31 car who's leading the race. Greg Chappell, really the only Roush Fenway Ford driver that's been hanging on the lead lap today. And they took a big swing at the chassis changes for Biffle. Here comes Larson. As Kevin Harvick closes up on Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kyle Larson in the pit lane. Jamie? And Kyle started his day fifth. He's been running there most of the day. Right side tires is the call here. He said his car has gone loose. And there's another wedge adjustment for Kyle Larson. Just not sure about these two tires with 30 laps to go. That makes that, that, I don't I don't like that either. Well, that leaves a seven cars, six cars rather that have not pitted. That includes pole sitter Jeff Gordon, who was at the tail end of the lead lap. Newman, Kozlowski, Logano, Kane, Regan Smith, Jeff Gordon have uh, yet to come to the pit lane, and they all well Newman pitted first out of that group. The others have uh, eight less laps. Yeah, well now what you're gambling, what you're hoping for is a caution. If you're if you're Newman, Kozlowski, Logano, those guys, they're, they're they're hoping there might be a caution right now. But I will say this: if I'm Casey Kane, Joy Logano. Brad Keselowski or Jeff Gordon, I can go to probably about lap 250, which is less than 20 to go. Maybe now that's the time to try two right side tires. I'd, I'd be okay with that, but 30 to go, not so sure, Larry. It may not win you the race, but it might buy you a good finish better than what you'd have. 28 to go. Ryan Newman, who went winless last year, but piled off enough points to survive each of the chase for the Sprint Cup eliminations and finish one point behind, one position behind Kevin Harvick for the Sprint Cup championship at Homestead Miami Speedway. Been a while since he's been to Victory Lane. The children's team just trying to sweat this one out and hope for a caution, just, which would leave just six cars on the lead lap. Just what we've seen with him all last year, though, consistently up there, finishes every race, and always finishes up near the front. Right now, Kevin Harvick is the first driver one lap down, so should that caution fly, Kevin would be back on the lead lap by virtue of the free pass. Cole Witt made his final pit stop as Newman and David Gilliland discuss track position along with David Reagan in the 18 who's on newer tires Ooh, three wide. Would you uh, Larry Mike would y'all expect anything less when we're in Vegas. Some of these guys rolling the dice taking a chance gambling a little bit. <laughs> we know Paul Wolf and Brad Keselowski would do that in a heartbeat. All right. Well we wait to see what Ryan Newman will do from the lead. We'll take a break but we're not going away.
Ryan Newman waited until two laps ago to make his pit stop. That hands the lead over to Brad Keselowski. Running about 31 seconds flat with 20 to go. Keselowski will have to make one more stop, as will Joey Logano, Regan Smith, Casey Kane, and Jeff Gordon. That is your top five. What about the two and the 22? Remember when we said they were in all kind of trouble. The 22 gets nabbed for speeding, coming in, going. The two has trouble. Here they are, first and second. And right now we have eight drivers on the lead lap. What the two and the 22 really would like to see is a caution because they're giving up over a second a lap. They probably can go another three to five laps on the load of fuel that they have. Here comes Joy Logano in the 22 now. I can't take it no more. I'm coming. Look that Sam Hornish coming in with him. So Logano means that there are five drivers you have yet to pit. And they have five of the first six spots. Brendan gone also in the pit lane with 18 laps to go. I love I love Paul Wolf and, and Brad Keselowski though. They will make you sweat. They might not have the winning strategy but they'll make you wonder if they have the winning strategy. And I think on all these drivers yet to make a stop you'll see exactly what Joey Logano's crew did two right side tires which were less than 20 oh, laps yeah. to go. That's a great call now. So Keselowski is the leader. He was last on pit road 55 laps ago. Regan Smith no mistakes, second. No slide here. here he comes. To told him not to slide the tires. That tells you right there they're going for two tires. Splash. Splash and go. Casey Kane also in from ninth place with a lot of damage. Jamie? Remember Casey Kane had a great car early on contending for the lead and then he had that right side damage run in with Carl Edwards. There's a chassis adjustment to help him out. Right sides are waiting on fuel. Let's go to Chris. Jamie, before this last cycle of pit stops, Brad Keselowski was running in six. Now they did do fix some damage at the back end of that car from the Carl Edwards Casey Kane wreck. So he lost quite a bit of track position running back up to six. Then two tires on that stop. So we've cycled around to Kevin Harvick as the leader. Jeff Gordon in fourth has yet to make his pit stop. But up front, Harvick, Earnhardt Truex with 16 to go. Twelve laps to go in Las Vegas. Kevin Harvick leading Martin Truex by two and a half seconds. Dale Earnhardt Jr. three back, then Ryan Newman. Denny Hamlin the top five. Jeff Gordon just finally makes his pit stop. He's the last car to pit. And he makes that stop with 11 laps to go. Chris, what about Kevin Harvick's race car? 
Well, initially he thought he had a tire going down. The team saying, hey, we think you're just in some dirty air. Things will get better. But now he's saying he thinks something wrong with the car. He just came over the radio, said he's got a vibration. So crew chief Rodney Childers telling him just hang on. He's definitely slowed down his lap times. That lap last time by 31.04. Truex at a 30.50. He's losing a lot of ground to Truex right now. And Ryan Newman coming hard, as you saw there. Back up into the picture in third place. Now here's the five hour energy big move of the race. This came two laps after the restart where Harvick just powers around the outside of Dale Earnhardt Jr. to retake the lead. Watching these lap times are kind of interesting. Here goes Harvick by this and what's he run this time. He's a 3070 and Truex goes by to 3077. I watched I watched Kevin do this earlier. Slow down for two or three laps and then pick it back up. I don't know if he's wondering if something wrong with the car or if it's just playing mind games, but Truex is hanging tough. Matt, how about the second place car? Just riding along, very quiet on the radio. And what a turnaround for Martin Truex Jr. Last year, five top tens. He's working on his third straight to open up 2015. Now, Cole Pern told me the big difference from this year to last year, everyone got together, they looked in the mirror, put in a tremendous amount of effort in the offseason. This is a different group of guys mentality-wise, and he says it doesn't stop there. The driver, he's totally different. He has his confidence back, and that's huge. Yeah, Matt, he only had one top five and five top tens total in 2014 last year. And the last time he had three straight top tens was the summer of 2013. The question is, does Martin Truex or Ryan Newman have anything for Kevin Harvick with seven laps to go? And a two second gap to make up. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. It, it, just watching the lap times, that was a 3094 by Harvick that time, a 3075 by Truex and a 3073 by Newman. So Kevin gives up a couple of tenths, but then he gets by some cars and picks it back up. So I think Harvick's okay. I think he's being real conservative. But coming six laps to go, there's a lot of lap down drivers just in front of that four car of Kevin's. Starter works the passing flag on the field as Harvick hustles past and off into turn number one. That's J.J. Yaley down to the inside. And Harvick that lap quicker than Truex, but slower than Newman. Yeah, Ryan Newman is closing in on Mark Drix Jr. Yeah. in that 78. I think it's going to be the battle for second if uh, the way things are shaping up. Because Newman is definitely closing in a hurry. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. after that two tire change on the last stop, four and a half seconds back in fourth with Denny Hamlin fifth. A.J. Allmendinger, nice run in sixth. Brad Kozlowski, Kyle Larson, Matt Kenseth, Joey Logano, your top ten. And what's impressive about Ryan Newman in that 31 car doing what they're doing, they only changed two tires under that green flag pit stop. It's funny when you're leading the race and have a car as dominant as that four car has been, how many things you can feel like is going wrong with it at the end of the day. Uh, it's just hard to believe it. You think, how can my car be this good? It's, it's, can I make it to the end? Will my car make it? Didn't you have once have a race car you named Wilma? Wilma, that's why we call it that. Will my car make it? <laughs> Will my car win? Will my car? Yeah, much quicker that lap than Martin Trix Jr. and Ryan Newman. Traffic quite a factor here in the closing laps. Four to go. I think Kevin, quite honestly, I think he's just being smart. Uh, if, even if he thought he did have a slight problem, he's nursing it and getting still getting good lap times. Now Newman had closed on Truex, but now uh, that gap between them is a full second. Yeah, I think that's four, four tires versus two. Yeah. And Earnhardt has fallen to five and a half back. He's still two seconds ahead of Hamlin, however, in the fourth spot. Three to go. You know, a lot of impressive runs, but to me, one of the most impressive, A.J. Allmendinger in this 40 car, 47 car, sitting there in sixth position and actually has a pretty good cushion over seventh place Brad Keselowski. Great run for this single car team. And they were nose to tail just a few laps ago, so he's pulled away from Keselowski. Yeah, Allmendinger was seventh last week. Yep. So the two teams that have really, I think, made incredible improvements from last year is the 47 and the, and the 78. They are they are on their game right, right here. Just right back. No pressure yet. 
White flag for Kevin Harvick. He's led 141 laps. That's triple what any other driver has led today. Came in here a four and a half to one shot. Short odds, but a pretty dominating performance. Win number 29 at the checkered flag, Kevin Harvick for Stewart Haas Racing. That wasn't a comfortable last run there. Rodney Childers, pretty, that's as excited as you'll see him get. Thank Couple. you for hanging in there, buddy. Hell of a job. Good job, Rodney, guys. Six consecutive top two finishes, the three races this year and the three last year. The record set in 1975 by Richard Petty is 11. But in recent years, that is quite a statistic. Tough well, to do. Tough always, to do. always knew Rodney Childers was a great crew chief. I always felt like if he got with one driver and could stick with that one driver, he could build a team like he has now with Kevin Harvick. And man, are they paying? Are they? Are they working well together? Next week we go to Phoenix, where Harvick has won four of the last five. <laughs> They're just licking their chops, baby. Kevin Harvick lights it up in Las Vegas. Sunoco fueling victories. I'm not sure anybody does a better burnout than Kevin Harvick. He sure he, gets a lot of practice. I think he's one of the first ones that really do the big time burnouts. It's his 29th career win. And his first at Las Vegas in his 15th appearance here. 12 different seasons. He's won at Hello. least one race now. <laughs> Are you in there, bud? <laughs> it's his ninth career win on a mile and a half track. <laughs> that's what that's what he that's what he he sees what we oh, see. He shredded the right rear on that car. Oh my goodness. Shredded pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Kevin Harvick defeats Martin Truex Jr. by 1.6 seconds. Ryan Newman third, three seconds back. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Denny Hamlin the top five. Live in Las Vegas, that's four-time champ Jeff Gordon apologizing to the youngster, Jeff Burton, for the little mix-up there. Gordon wound up 18th in the race. That wreck that kind of took him out of contention. Started 41st after qualifying on the pole because he was in a backup car. 
Gordon made it inside the top 10. The winner in the four car is Kevin Harvick. But let's check in first with Matt Martin Truex Jr. who wound up second. He's standing by with Matt Yoakum. Chris, for the fifth time in his career, Martin Truex Jr. finishes second on a mile and a half. Can you just describe the turnaround and the inspiration on and off track from not only the guys on the team, but also your girlfriend? I really can't put it into words, honestly. Just uh, just really proud of everyone. Uh, you know, obviously proud of Sherry, what she's been through, and uh, you know everything I've learned from her to uh, to be a better person. But uh, just got to thank everybody at Furniture Row, everybody back at the shop, uh, ECR Engines, guys at RCR for all their help, uh, chassis-wise and everything else. And uh, you know, just a solid weekend. You know, the guys are making good decisions, and uh, we're not having any terrible luck. So just uh, you know, got to keep doing what we're doing, and uh, you find a little bit more speed, and we'll be able to challenge them, guys. Harvick was so fast all day. Just uh, Got the lead on him once there on restart. Thought, yeah, that's pretty cool, but uh, didn't have anything to hold him off. So we'll keep working and uh, we'll get better, and hopefully this is a sign of things to come. The confidence and especially the performance back for Martin Truex Jr. Chris? Truex, one of the long shots. They were all long shots against the favorite. Kevin Harvick today, the defending NASCAR champ, celebrating his first Las Vegas victory. Chris Neville is down there to take it all in. Oh, and the Budweiser's flying down here. Kevin Harvick extending a streak of now six races of either first or second. Kevin, and you did this one in dominant fashion, your first win at Las Vegas. Wow, what a day. Man, it's so cool to, to win here at Las Vegas. Um, you know, start this West Coast swing off this, this way is, is pretty awesome. Just to be in front of all these fans that I've raced in front of since about the mid-90s. So um, pretty special to win here. Got to thank Jimmy John's Budweiser, Chevrolet, Outback, Ditec, um, Mobile One, Hunt Brothers, everybody on this car that, that makes it go around, and all these guys and everybody at Stuart Haas for everything they do. Those last 20 laps, you thought something was going down, maybe a tire going down, then a vibration. What was going on there? I don't know, but it wasn't right. Um, luckily, we were able to, you know, to, to hang on to it and, and had a good enough lead to, to where uh, uh, we could pace ourselves and, and be able to um, um, keep the lead, I guess. So just want to thank all the fans. What a great crowd today in Sprint for everything they do for our series. Great job. Thank Chris. Thank you. We'll have a lot more on the NASCAR and Fox post-race show from Las Vegas. Kevin Harvick punching out his fourth win in the last nine races. And the celebrating continuing. You heard Kevin Harvick from Bakersfield, California, talk about the fast start on the West Coast swing and on to Phoenix after this. He started 18th and wound up first. The unofficial results of the Cobalt 400 back with Michael Walter, Chris Myers. Harvick, your favorite, 
Truex Jr. at 20 to 1, Ryan Newman at 30 to 1 made it interesting at the end as best they could. You know, and Kyle Larson, he had a fast car early in the going. In the middle of the race, it got off a bit, but they were able to adjust and finish inside the top 10. Joey Logano looked fast early, so pit road penalties cost him. And nice to see Brian Vickers get back at a car and, and finish uh, after having heart surgery less than three months ago. And Casey Kane and Jeff Gordon both in crashes, but managed top 20 finishes. Rounding out, Danica Patrick. Trevor Bain, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Tony Stewart, who was a long shot coming into the race, has had a rough start to his season. Yeah, I'm really surprised. That car was fast yesterday in practice, and I thought he would be in good shape today, but obviously the setup was off for Tony. And uh, Jimmy Johnson, who led for a while, looked dominant in the first half, out of the picture with some wheel problems and problems in the pits. Problems all year for Jeff Gordon. Jamie Little is standing by. Well, Jeff Gordon started on the pole, then, of course, in a backup car from the rear. You worked your way forward, had a good car. And what happened with you and Jeb Burton there? Yeah, uh, Jim, I guess Jimmy blew a right front tire. I was right behind Jeb, getting ready to make a move on, on him. Uh, you know, I, was, I wasn't sure if I was going to go inside or outside. And all of a sudden, he started checking up. And I thought he was doing it to let me go by him. And I didn't realize uh, until right at that moment when my spotter said something to me that Jimmy was having a problem. And then I, I ran in the back of it. Ruined the front, uh, you know, ruined our day with this 3M Chevrolet. Certainly ruined the front end. I mean, the car just wouldn't go down the straightaway, and then it was real tight. Man, we were coming. Uh, you know, I, I, we had one weird set of tires. We, we, we drove up there right at the beginning. The car was amazing on rails. The next set of tires, the thing was just terrible loose. So we made an adjustment, and then the car went back to being tight. So I don't know what happened there, but that got us off a little bit. But great effort. Just uh, can't believe the way these days are going. Certainly an eventful day for Jeff Gordon in his final Las Vegas race. Well, Junior Nation thought this could be a W here in Las Vegas, putting a check mark next to this mile and a half. But that final run of the finish, Junior, did the car just get away from you balance-wise? <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, we'll, we'll go home and take a look at it. Um, we did, you know, didn't put lefts on it, making a gamble. I like the gamble. I like the call. Love being aggressive. Weren't going to drive up there and pass that for. So we had to take, take a chance and, uh, you know, Second, fifth, fourth, whatever, it don't matter if you don't win. So um, happy with the Nationwide Chevrolet all day long. Uh, last year, run second, almost won the race by luck. You know, we sit around, run 10th, 8th place all day last year. We weren't a very good car. This year, we're, our cars are racing up there. So um, we think we got the cars better than we had last year. And uh, Hendrick, Hendrick overall has great speed. The engine department is doing awesome. And uh, once I had a wreck back home, uh, he's being lazy this weekend. So. Uh, we're going to get one. We got to, I want to win. We're going to get there. All right. Thank you, Junior. Referring to uh, Rick Hendrick and those uh, Chevys and the chase standings, three races in of the 36 that decide the championship. And you see three guys that were, in fact, to Harvick Logano uh, last year actually came down to those two. And Jimmy Johnson Jr.'s right there, but yet that win has eluded him so far. Don't you just love his attitude? And that's what NASCAR is all about now. You've got to win. You can have a good point. Nobody cares about a good points day anymore. Right. It's all about getting that victory. And a solid start to the season by Dale Jr. Truex and especially A.J. Allmendinger. He's going to be really good at certain venues this year and he's got a strong start. Last year in the chase, Ryan Newman made it interesting without a win and he made this interesting. Let's check in with Matt Yoakum who's standing by with the driver of the 31. Well, Luke Lambert said no championship battling hangover from last year when you almost won the championship. This team still continues to ride that momentum and, and takes it even a step further this week. Yeah, this is a great team effort with the Caterpillar Chevrolet. Uh, I got to thank Luke and all the guys, especially the guys on pit road. They've done a phenomenal job the last two uh, two races and uh, just um, come up short. And that that uh, is no fun. No, don't get me wrong, but it was an improvement over last year. We improved throughout the entire race, uh, and, and uh, you know I'm I'm satisfied only because we're improving. I'm not satisfied because we didn't win. Thank you, Ryan. Well, great return to racing for Brian Vickers, who was just happy to be back in a race car going 200 miles an hour. You had a really good day. What was it like for you? It had to have been a good test. It was more than that. It was, uh, it was, a, it was awesome. It, you know, in a lot of ways, it was a victory uh, for me and, and everyone that supported me this far, my family, friends, uh, partners like Aaron's and Toyota have been phenomenal, Jansen. So uh, I'm just so thankful to be back in a race car. And, uh, you know, you always want to win. I mean, I'm, I'm a competitor. I'm not going to tell you that I, I didn't want to do a little, you know, a little more. But... Uh, in so many ways, this is, a, this is a victory for me for where we were at three months ago, and I'm um, very thankful to have three, three months ago, Brian Vickers wasn't even sure he'd be back in a race car. He finishes 15th.
You can see that smile, and you were part of that. Uh, oh. Michael Waltrip Racing helping to give him the opportunity to get back behind the wheel. I was laying in the hospital bed, and he looked me in the eyes, and he said, I'll be back, boss. That was just three months ago. He had his whole chest cut open for open-heart surgery. Shows you the commitment by that young man. I'm just so proud of him and happy he's on my team. Uh, he came in trying to win uh, the fourth race of his career in Cup. When we continue here live from Las Vegas, let's check in with Matt Yoakum. I believe he's with, let me hear from Denny Hamlin. Okay, Matt? Damage to the left front, damage to the right rear. Just looks like a good night at the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. What do you take most from this performance here, a top five finish at Las Vegas, Denny? Well, we're not at South Boston yet. Uh, we'll be there in a few months for the Short Track Showdown, but uh, this FedEx office team uh, did a great job. Dave did a great job with the overnight uh, adjustments. We got better, but, you know, Daytona, we ran fourth. Atlanta, we probably should have, you know, ran fourth, fighting wreck, and here we're fourth to fifth. So I think we know where our program's at right now. Uh, we just got to get a little bit more speed, um, and uh, we'll be able to race these guys. But right now, we just need to optimize our weekends, finish where we're supposed to, and uh, and execute like we had, uh, like we did today. Thank you, Danny. Well, we'll have more from Las Vegas. Kevin Harvick, Saturday, he was in the Fox Sports 1 broadcast booth for the Xfinity race. Sunday, he's in victory lane right here in Las Vegas. Josh, keep that on, Kevin Harvick led five times today, dominated 142 laps. The celebration of the four car continuing. Stuart Haas racing and the last driver to go six straight races, finishing first or second was Jeff Gordon back in 1996. Kevin Harvick has done that. And obviously with his first victory of this season, last year he won for the first time on his championship season in Phoenix. He's won there the last three times. That's where we head next. Yeah, how are you gonna stop this role he's on? Phoenix is probably his best track, but as I look at the results today, I see Denny Hamlin. He's great on the short tracks, always is. He could be a real challenge for Harvick come next Sunday. Is there an early sense and you see how important Getting a win early with Jimmy Johnson, right, who won in Atlanta, looked good early, but all of a sudden you have problems. You're not in the picture. Logano, who led, has pit road problems. He falls out. Getting that early victory, like these drivers have, allows you to gamble and says, look, I'm already, at least I know I'm in the NASCAR playoff picture, the chase. You know, you just have to win. I love that. That's what it's all about. And Logano and Kozlowski have both been fast enough each week to get victories. They've been right there, and Logano got the big Daytona 500. So th these teams are ready to race and battle hard for those championship positions. And we've seen that battling so far. You're going to hear more from uh, Kevin Harvick, the defending champ and now the winner here at the Cobalt Tools 400 on Victory Lane. Check the time listings in your area over on Fox Sports 1. Always on the Sunday race, we recap. Tonight on Fox right here, 
Animation domination continues with The Simpsons all the way into Brooklyn Nine-Nine Family Guy and The Last Man on Earth, except on the West Coast. On the West, we're on the West Coast. We're part of our West Coast swing. <laughs> Three in a row. And from here, we go to Phoenix and then the California Speedway in Fontana. So note the start time. That's 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. We sped the clocks forward one hour, and Kevin Harvick sped past everybody. The favorite coming in, really a co-favorite with Jimmy Johnson, but he held up against those challenges, even a Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the mix. And that's the way it wound up for the smiling driver in the four car. Impressive runs by those RCR affiliated teams. Martin Drix Jr. right up there in the front, and then Ryan Newman also hot on the heels of our winner. And starting up front, what does it really mean? I mean, he started 18th. Jimmy Johnson started 30 beyond 30th last week. They've been able to get into victory lane. Nine different leaders, 18 lead changes, and in the end, Kevin Harvick, sixth straight season with at least a victory. Now he heads to Phoenix. Thanks for watching and being a part of NASCAR on Fox. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.